call this meeting of the Sterling Please Heights City Council to order. Switch, no Please stand with me for the Pledge of Allegiance. Remain standing for the invocation. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Dear God, please bless our elected officials. Grant them courage and wisdom to do what is right for all citizens. Amen. 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 Thank you, Ms. Riska. Can we please have the roll call? Mayor Taylor? Here. Mrs. Saraski? Here. Mrs. Koski? Present. Mr. Radke? Here. Mrs. Schmidt? Present. Mr. Yanez? Here. Mrs. Zarko? Present. Thank you, Council. Mr. Miram, can we have you back? Mr. Miram? Salem. No, 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 no. Can we have you back at your seat, sir? Yeah. Yeah, no, no. Right now. <laughs> Where's he? Sir, go back to your seat, sir. <laughs> All right. Council, we need approval of the agenda tonight. Mr. Mayor. Mrs. Koski. Move to approve the agenda. Support. It's been moved and supported. Is there any discussion? With no discussion, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> Motion carries. Next item on our agenda is a report from our city manager, Mark Vanderpool. Mr. Vanderpool. Thank you very much, Mayor. Uh, first, I want to remind everyone that Columbus Day is on Monday, October 12th. And as a result, city offices will be closed for an in-service training day uh, for the uh, city staff. There'll be no interruption of refuse collection. And anyone who needs more information on office hours or processing any uh, transactions with the city, feel free to call uh, 446 City. Also, uh, realizing the fall season is upon us. And unfortunately, we know what comes after that, but we first have to get rid of the leaves. I want to remind everyone that you cannot rake leaves into the road. Uh, unfortunately, that is against our city ordinance. It clogs up the uh, sewer inlets, uh, storm sewer inlets, and, and so on, and also uh, creates an unsafe uh, situation for uh, motorists and so on in the road. Uh, so we uh, require that your leaves be put in a paper bag or a container with a, a composting sticker on it. And you can get the stickers at any of our city facilities. If you want more information on that, you can call our community relations department. Uh, we'd, we'd be happy to mail a sticker as well if, uh, if that's more convenient for residents. But you can call 446 2470 for more information on the proper disposal of leaves, including the proper way to compost. You can also go to our website for more information on the topic. I also want to give an update on two of our road projects. Uh, first, the good news is uh, Shaner Road is beginning uh, soon, within the next couple of weeks. Uh, the bad news on Shaner is it will not all be completed by year end. Uh, obviously, Shaner Road, which is a county road project, is a couple of months behind schedule uh, due to some uh, nuances and intricacies with the state bidding process and, and somewhat related to uh, uh, the COVID uh, dilemma upon us. But it is starting. So the curb work from Shaner, this would be just north of Plumbrook, uh, to north of um, Clinton River Road, both directions, uh, four bridge crossings. It'll begin with curb work in the next couple of weeks, and the curb work will be finished up this season. And then next season, beginning as soon as weather breaks in the spring, uh, the rest of Shaner Road will be completed. As you uh, can imagine, that is a very large project and will take a, a good part of the spring summer to complete that uh, next year. Now, there are also some very rough sections on Shaner, especially by Clinton River as you're headed uh, southbound and, and down by 17 Mile as well. Uh, the contractor will be making some temporary repairs in those locations prior to winter. Uh, so I'm confident that will uh, get us through the winter months, but look forward to a new Shaner roadway over the next, uh, uh, certainly the next uh, uh, construction season. 
Also, Sol Road is uh, proceeding very well. In fact, uh, the resurfacing will be finished uh, by mid-October, October 16th, the week of October 16th. Uh, so good news there. Uh, both uh, lanes of traffic will be opened up uh, uh, shortly thereafter. So good news on Sol Road. All of our other road projects are, are proceeding along with the county road projects and those will all be finished up uh, this construction season. And now if I can draw your attention uh, to the screen, I would like to take a, a couple of minutes to review uh, two very uh, important proposals that will be on the uh, November ballot for Sterling Heights residents only. Uh, so uh, it's called the four and 400 ballot proposals. Uh, so they both involve charter changes. And let me focus on, on the first question, which involves uh, terms uh, for the positions of mayor and city council. As many know, we have two-year terms in Sterling Heights for uh, those positions. And the two-year terms you can see is a, uh, an anomaly when we look at uh, similar sized cities across the country. Uh, so you can see that 92% of the cities in our population category uh, have four-year terms uh, for their city council members, almost 80% uh, for the term of mayor. So you can see we are in the uh, very uh, small minority group with two-year terms, and I'll talk about uh, why four-year terms is considered to be a best practice for the vast majority of cities uh, nationwide. Uh, when we take away the population category and we just look at cities of any size nationwide, small, medium, large, still the vast majority have four-year terms, 76% uh, for council members, 64% uh, for the term of mayor. And then when we drill down to Michigan, uh, here again, uh, the practice uh, is four-year terms for both positions. When you look at comparable communities uh, to Sterling Heights, which would include Warren, Ann Arbor, Livonia, Southfield, Farmington Hills, Lansing, Dearborn, Troy, Grand Rapids, they all have four-year terms for the positions of mayor and city council. Uh, and the same for all cities in Macomb County. Uh, so again, Sterling Heights is definitely an outlier uh, with two-year terms. So what are the advantages for four-year terms compared to two-year terms? And, and because of these advantages, this is in part the reason why so many cities across the country have four-year terms. First, there's a savings uh, uh, moving to four-year terms compared to two-year terms. The cost to run an election is $75,000. That number is not going down. It certainly goes up uh, with inflation as time goes on. And if primaries are required for either the position of mayor or city council um, or both, uh, there again, an election is required double the amount. So it's another $75,000. It costs the same to run a primary election as it does a, a regular election. Uh, so as mentioned, uh, the vast majority of cities uh, in Michigan and nationwide have four-year terms. And the reason, in addition to saving money, is largely because when you think about uh, the endeavors of a city, whether it's Sterling Heights or Centennial, Colorado, or, or Los Angeles, Chicago, and the like, when you think about the work of cities, uh, the initiatives take far longer than two years to complete. Think about, for example, uh, just Lakeside. Uh, the redevelopment of Lakeside, we've been in the planning stages for that for the past five years, and the new owner is about to invest hundreds of millions of dollars in Lakeside and the redevelopment. And uh, certainly, uh, that is a long-term project that certainly is very hard to accomplish in two years, and the same with so many other 
uh, city initiatives from uh, master planning to uh, developing ordinances and implementing capital plans and uh, building renovations and major infrastructure projects uh, like Innovate Mound and so on. <coughs> So we have come up with a number of uh, FAQs. These are all posted on our website and this information is all readily available. I'm not going to um, uh, belabor the questions because I've uh, touched on most of the points, but when we started researching this topic about a year ago, uh, COVID-19 was nowhere on the radar screen. Uh, so. Uh, the, the pandemic has obviously taken hold and, and what many um, governments are trying to do across the country is figure out new ways to uh, do things in a safe uh, manner. And so now when we look at this initiative moving from two year to four year terms, uh, it, it provides a, a different light in, in knowing the pandemic we're living under. So. In terms of uh, safety precautions, I think most would agree that having uh, fewer elections where possible and instead of two-year terms and, and replacing it with four-year terms is safer for voters. Obviously, there's far fewer touch points. Uh, when you think about a local election, uh, at least 20,000 people vote in a local election. And in these times where pandemics may become more common, come in place and the protocols we live within may be long-standing. They may be with us for many years. Having fewer touch points is certainly a more safe environment. So another uh, question is, you know, what happens if, if this doesn't pass? Of course, the status quo continues for Sterling Heights. What we're about as an administration in the city of Sterling Heights is always looking at a continuous improvement. Where are areas where we could be doing things better? And where are we aligned with best practices? So this is an area that we've identified that we, we could as a city do better and align ourselves with uh, the vast majority nationwide. So that's the first proposal on the ballot. The second proposal relates to signature requirements. And the city charter provides a signature requirement for a resident running for mayor or city council to be placed on the ballot. And right now that requirement is you have to get signatures uh, from a minimum of 1%, or no more than 4% of the total registered voters in the city of Sterling Heights. When we prepared this uh, uh, presentation, we had about 86,000, just over 86,000 registered voters. Uh, we now have over 90,000 registered voters, 93,000 plus. Uh, so that means you would need over 900 signatures to be able to run for the position of mayor or city council. When we look at uh, comparable communities in this respect and best practices, if you will, uh, best practice being considered, uh, you know, what the vast majority of communities are doing. You can see here, once again, Sterling Heights uh, ranks very high. We're, we're the highest, likely the highest in the state of Michigan. Uh, you can see the city of Troy, the requirement is 60 signatures, Farmington Hills just over 200, Southfield 200. Uh, so the proposal is to create a flat amount of 400 registered uh, voters. So in other words, you would have to get signatures if you wanted to run for the position of mayor or city council. Instead of 900 plus, you would have to get 400. So obviously, uh, this is centered on uh, safety protocols. Uh, here again, eliminating touch points and, and providing for a safer environment certainly makes sense in the world we live in today. Uh, so in terms of uh, what the questions look like on the screen before you, they're very simple. They'll be at the, the end of the, the ballot. The first one uh, simply says, shall section 5.01 of the city charter be amended to provide that the mayor and council person serve a four-year term of office, yes or no? And the same for the nominating uh, signatures. So, um, you know, do, do you feel the charter should be amended to uh, require a minimum of 400 registered voters and no more than 1,000 
uh, yes or no. So very simplistic. Um, our job right now before the election is to make sure that voters have as much information as possible to vote yes or no. And you can go to our website, sterling heights forward slash four and 400, and you can get much more information on these two proposals. So in light of the season, I thought it was important that uh, you know more about these ballot proposals. And now for uh, the last item on my report, I'd like to talk a little bit about a new and exciting program in our Parks and Recreation Department. Although the past uh, seven months have been challenging, a new bright spot is on the horizon as it relates to our Parks and Recreation programming. Parks and Recreation Department has taken the opportunity to prepare and implement programming surrounding one of the hottest trends around the world, esports and e-gaming. E-gaming gives participants the opportunity to play video games in a competitive environment, allowing them to showcase their skills while interacting with other players who have similar gaming interests. The sport has grown infinitely over the past couple of years with high schools and colleges now fielding teams to compete in respective leagues. Given the restrictions with COVID-19, these leagues and tournaments can be played remotely and virtually, although the goal is to bring everyone under one roof once the guidelines make that possible. The city's first ever sponsored league will be starting in November and will be offered to teens ages 12 to 18. The cost is $25 to participate. The league will start out with a maximum of 16 participants. And we think this will be uh, very popular and will grow uh, certainly in popularity. So I'd like to take just a moment to uh, show you the following video. Hey guys, Parks and Rec is starting up an eSports competition. Join us for Smash Ultimate Tournaments with rule sets ranging from 1v1s to 8v8 free-for-alls. Sign up online at myshpr.net. Must be 12 to 18 years of age to register. League days will be November 10th through December 16th, Wednesday afternoons, 4 to 5 p.m., all wrapping up with the tournament. Veggie streamed on Twitch at shparksrec. I just wanted to compliment uh, Kyle Langloy, our <clears throat> Parks and Recreation Director, and his entire team for developing this. And we look forward to uh, uh, the program uh, starting out in November. And Mayor, that concludes my report this evening. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Vanderpool. Um, I will tell you that uh, eSports has been something that I've been talking with Kyle about for the last two years. I'm very excited for this. I spoke just two weeks ago with the new owners of Lakeside Mall that are doing planning on doing a huge esports uh, operation, if you want to call it, at Lakeside Mall. So we're excited about that, too, very timely. So we have two presentations tonight. Uh, our first presentation is the 2020 Beautification Awards. It's going to be a little bit different than what we've done in years past, but uh, we, uh, we're used to that by now, right? So <laughs> let me welcome up the chairman of the Beautification Commission, Mr. Gary Isom. Good evening. Uh, good evening. I'm Gary Isom, chairperson for the Sterling Heights Beautification <clears throat> Commission. Tonight, it gives me great pleasure to present our 2020 Beautification Awards. The Sterling Heights Beautification Commission's mission is to encourage all city residents and property owners to preserve and enhance the beauty of public and private properties. One of the ways we do that is through our annual award ceremony, where we honor those who go above and beyond in beautifying their Sterling Heights properties. Tonight, we carry on that tradition here before this body. We thank you for welcoming this presentation as we showcase our residents and business leaders' dedication to making Sterling Heights a more beautiful place to live, work, and play. For the past five months, the Beautification Commission welcomed nominations from citizens who wish to recognize the Sterling Heights property for outstanding beauty resulting from the planting of annuals and perennials. 
The commission reviewed photos taken of more than 50 nominated homes, businesses, and places of worship. Commissioners judged nominations and selected a best of the best from each category that had that wow factor when seen from the curve. Commissioners selected winners and based on overall beauty, aesthetics, and artistic use of color. Each nomination will be presented in the categories of single family resident properties, commercial properties, multifamily properties, and places of worship. A best of the best recipient will be honored in each of the categories. I'd like to take a moment and thank all the beautification commissioners here tonight for their dedication to this program. When I call your name, could you please stand? Nancy Kajak, Manny Gonzalez, Matthew Smith, Lisa Lane, and our newest member, Sue Hobig. To the best of the best recipients here tonight, when your name is called, please come forward to receive your award. A photograph of each honored address will be shown on Sterling Heights TV and here on a video screen. <clears throat> Commercial properties. Pennas of Sterling. Multi-family properties. Laurel Family Apartments. Shoal Creek Apartments. Residential properties. Three three six eight nine Nina Drive. One four zero one seven Broham Drive. Three four four five four Mayor Run Circle. One four five seven two Emerson zero eight nine Camel Drive three eight five five Nightbridge Circle three three one four eight Monticello Drive one four five five six Sundew Lane. One four nine three seven Leary Drive. One four five nine three Sundew Lane. <coughs> three four five four seven Clearview Circle. Three four four zero one Amsterdam Drive. One four five. Five eight Emerson Drive, three five six zero six Deville Drive, four zero seven seven eight Rainier Drive, eight eight five six Burke Hill Drive, one four nine three zero seven six Drive. seven Elbert Drive. Haverly Village. One four five four four Emerson Drive. Four four two four two six Canning Drive. One four five four five Redford Drive. Three seven three three zero Fieldcrest Lane. Four three two. Four three Chardonnay Drive. One five zero eight nine Mill Creek Drive. One three eight five zero Heatherwood Drive. Three four four six zero Clearview Drive. Four 
11-2-1-2-5, Hanks Lane, 11 18 Mile Road. <coughs> 4239 Fulton Court 14561 Emerson Drive 11125 Granada Drive 38978 Marlboro Drive 13748 Imperial Court 13544 Ascot Drive. 35749 Deering Drive. 14923 Leary Drive. 13640 Ascot Drive. 14267 Lakeshore Drive, 35268 Lana Lane, 11768 Meteor Drive, 4288 Connie Drive, 37093 Colgate Court, 35475 Deering Drive 3521 Leeson Drive And now for the best of the best Commercial Properties Vintimeglia's Italian Foods. Multi-family properties. <coughs> Arden Court's Memory Care Community. Places of Worship St. Jane Francis D. Chantel Residential properties. 36239 Melbourne Drive. I'd like to thank everyone for attending tonight's beautification awards. I'd also like to extend a special thank you to Eckwards Greenhouse for their generosity 
and donating $25 uh, gift certificates to all the nominations and the best of the best. Thank you very much. Gary, let's give them all a big round of applause. On behalf of the City Council, we really appreciate the work done by the Beautification Commission and going through all these nominations and putting together this program every year. We also, of course, want to thank the residents and the businesses and the places of worship that are taking time to make sure that their property looks beautiful and presentable. Uh, it helps with not just property value, but I think it overall just helps everybody's uh, self-esteem and, and feeling about the city and feeling about themselves. Uh, when you see beautiful places, uh, it makes you feel better. And so thank you for all of the uh, businesses and residents that went above and beyond to uh, help improve the quality of life for all of our residents. So thank you again. And we look forward to a more traditional uh, 2021 Beautification Awards. Chairman Isom, thank you again for all your hard work. Thank you, Mayor Taylor. That's uh, that for the Beautification Awards. The next presentation we have tonight is in our Nice Neighbor Award series. And for that, I'm going to hand it over to Councilwoman Maria Schmidt. Thank you, Mayor Taylor. <clears throat> tonight, there will be two presentations on this, under the city's Nice Neighbor Program, which honors homeowners and businesses that improve the quality of life for their neighbors. The Community Relations Department is proud to present Ford Motor Company and FCA USA LLC for recognition as recipients of the Nice Neighbor Awards. Ford Motor Company and FCA USA LLC were nominated for the Nice Neighbor Award by City Manager Mark Vanderpool. In support of his nominations, Mr. Vanderpool states that as at the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, Ford Motor Company rapidly pivoted from car manufacturing to production of medical ventilators, which were in short supply when the crisis began. Mr. Vanderpool cites that to date, Ford Motor Company has fulfilled its $336 million contract and delivered 50,000 Model AE ventilators since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic. Ford Motor Company has also donated approximately 450,000 face masks to the Detroit Public Schools Community, Community District to protect students and staffers as they return to school. The masks were made by Ford UAW employees at the company's Utica Van Dyke, or I'm sorry, Van Dyke Transmission Plant mm -hmm. in Sterling Heights. In all, the Ford funds plans to distribute 10 million masks to schools, nonprofits, and other community groups across the country. Other recipients of the masks included the Disabled American Veterans, the American Red Cross, food banks, and the state of Michigan, which can distribute them to COVID-19 test sites, health centers, and homeless shelters. Mr. Vanderpool also notes FCA USA's provision of 64,000 surgical masks to the city of Sterling Heights FCA USA also donated a total of 245,000 surgical masks to Macomb County, totaling 2.2 million surgical masks donated to the state of Michigan during the COVID-19 pan pandemic. Additionally, FCA USA has donated over $5 million in meals uh, to, in North America to children and seniors in need since May including 60,000 meals through Macomb County Action. Their eff the efforts by Ford Motor Company and FCA USA LLC are a shining example of how local businesses have contributed to the quality of life for all who live in Sterling Heights. Unfortunately, the uh, representatives from Ford could not make it tonight, but I would like to personally um, thank and present uh, Ms. Valerie Knoll from FCA USA LLC with her Nice Neighbor Award.
Okay, thank you very much, uh, Councilwoman Schmidt, for that presentation. And thank you to FCA and Ford Motor Company. These uh, masks have been a big lifesaver for the fire department, especially early on when it was hard to source PPE. And uh, we're, we're very lucky to have great corporate citizens like uh, the ones we do in the city of Sterling Heights. That will move on to the next item on our agenda, which is an ordinance introduction. This is to consider introduction of an ordinance amending chapter two of the code of ordinances to create the community alliance. We have a presentation from our community relations director, Melanie Davis. Ms. Davis. Thank you so much, Mayor and members of city council. So as you know, a little bit uh, more than a month ago, we brought forth an initial ordinance to create an advisory commission that would um, advise city council and city administration on all matters pertaining to diversity, inclusion, and human relations. And at that time, there were still some questions that needed to be answered. So we took the council's feedback and your questions um, regarding how the new commission would be organized, as well as how we might go about creating a sort of a unique identity for this group and what its true purpose would be. And what we ultimately took away from that meeting is that there is a real desire uh, to bring together all voices and all experiences that make up our city and to break down barriers that might separate the community to ensure that every single person who's living in Sterling Heights feels welcome and can fully participate in what you are calling the Sterling Heights experience or in other words, kind of what makes our community home. So based on your feedback, city administration worked to kind of design a new concept for an advisory commission that focuses on unity as the catalyst for creating a truly welcoming community. And you'll see that in the branding that we've created for this proposed commission. So I just wanted to draw your attention to the screen there for a second. So. We did create a branding for this proposed commission that features the word unity as a prominent play as a part of the word community. And we thought that that was really important because that's really what we want to focus on in this new commission. And one of the things that, that um, I found that I thought was kind of truly really embodied the spirit of what we want this new commission to be, it was actually a quote from our State of the City address that was given by the mayor little over a year ago in September of 2019. I'm gonna read that for you now. He said, one of the worst human emotions is the feeling of being unwelcome. The lonely feeling that no one should have to feel in their own home. And that's why inclusiveness is one of the city's core values. It's indispensable if we want to create that sense of home for every resident. So for young and old, for black and white, or immigrant or citizen, or Christian or Muslim, or able-bodied or disabled, and for anyone else who calls Sterling Heights home. We strive to provide the opportunity for all residents to create those human connections that all of us need to feel that we are welcome and included. And we kind of felt like that was sort of the spirit of this commission and, and uh, the unity that we want to embrace as part of this. I know we're having trouble with the clicker, Mark, so I might just ask you to advance. Thank you. So the purpose of the Community Alliance is really to unify Sterling Heights and make the bonds of living together strong. Together, we can break through the barriers of prejudice, bias, and divisiveness to fully realize our vision of a vibrant and inclusive community with an exceptional quality of life. But we know that this will not be a reality until every resident in the city of Sterling Heights feels welcome, feels accepted, and feels respected, and feels safe. And those are the four things that we kept coming back to as a part of this commission. As Helen Keller said, alone, we can do so little. 
together we can do so much. So next slide. So the process that we wanted to, that we're proposing that we would use for this advisory commission would be number one, to produce an ordinance establishing the Community Alliance as an advisory commission to, th to the city council, which is what we're here for today. And then to identify and appoint a diverse group of seven individuals with differing backgrounds and differing experiences that they can bring to the table of passionate residents who are committed to the spirit and the purpose of the Community Alliance and also committed to effectuating the changes that are needed to unify the city of Sterling Heights. Next slide. Then the next step would be we would support the efforts of the Community Alliance to do the first step in any good strategic uh, planning process, which would be to conduct the research. So we would have them engage in sort of a SWOT analysis, and we would have them look at the strengths and the weaknesses and the opportunities and threats for Sterling Heights in terms of being a fully unified community. And, you know, we would urge them at that point to have those uh, tough but candid conversations to really tackle the tough issues, to make sure that we are exploring what really are those strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And then armed with the analysis from that, then we would work to have them develop goals and objectives to create a Sterling Heights where, again, every resident feels welcome, accepted, respected, and safe, and to then provide an action plan that they could implement. Then after that, we would present those goals and objectives and that action plan to the city council. And once we had everybody's feedback and we made sure that we were in lockstep, we would then collaborate with area civic and business leaders, community organizations, local subject matter experts, and other stakeholders so that we could develop programming and identify potential funding sources and grants and the like that would help us move forward in meeting or exceeding the objectives as set forth in, as a part of that overall Community Alliance Action Plan. As far as the timeline that we're proposing for this group, we would hopefully adopt the uh, ordinance that would allow this commission to be created this month, and that would give us the balance of this calendar year to then recruit the, the initial commissioners. And then it would allow us to get on the agenda for a January 2021 council meeting, the opportunity to appoint those commissioners. And then they would have the balance of that calendar year, the next 11 months, to go through and do that SWOT analysis, have those conversations, draft that community action plan that we're talking about. They would be ready then to present their community alliance action plan at our strategic planning session for 2022 and then immediately following in February of 2022, they would be able to begin implementing that action plan. So those, that's the initial concept, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have uh, for us at this time. Okay, thank you very much, Ms. Davis. Uh, at this time, we'll go to comments from residents, and then if we have anything for you, we'll call you back up during our deliberations. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak on this item? Okay, Mr. Jefferson. Um, Charles Jefferson, Sterling Heights. Uh, Melanie said a lot, but didn't say anything. Um, I'm just wondering how do we preach unity when we have council members sitting up there to throw a tantrum tantrum at the last meeting and just yell out bigot to some resident. How can we expect you guys to enforce these rules? I still don't know what this community is doing or what they're implementing or how they're going to implement it. I don't know how you guys want to uh, come up and enforce it, like I said, with the mayor in his background, my rack yelling out, just yelling, bigot, without no proof. Him yelling, telling, saying that the other members who didn't go along with him say that uh, you guys are working with malcontented, 
biggest in this community. So I, don't preach to me about being unity when we got people not willing to, already showed us that they're not willing to be unified up in here. So uh, this, 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 this is just a waste of people's time and effort. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Jefferson. Anyone else on this item? Take up Ms. Ryan. <clears throat> Jackie Ryan, Sterling Heights. Mr. Taylor, Mr. Racky, this is unbelievable. That's the only word I could come up with. I mean, number one, this makes absolutely no sense because we have a constitution in place. And let me read you what our constitution stands and says. It says, we the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect nation, establish justice, insecure domestic tranquility, provide the common defense, promote general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity to ordain and establish the Constitution for the United States of America. That takes care of any kind of commission you need to do, right there. This is absurd. Number one, you did not explain it anymore better than you did the last time. Number two, um, you, you got so much vague stuff in here. Um, break down barriers. What barriers are we experiencing, Mr. Taylor and Mr. Racky? The only barriers I've been seeing is you two. You know, sitting there doing stuff at every meeting to where residents don't even want to show up because it's so out of control at times. So, excuse me, how is this ever going to be done when that is being orchestrated at our city council meetings? I agree with Mr. Jefferson. He's been here almost every meeting. You know, some people can't even stomach the meetings. So I'm this whole commission, I mean, I can go through level by level, but the main thing here is we don't need it. It's not necessary. This is all about diversity and inclusion. It's about a select group. Why don't you tell us the truth about what you're really doing? Who is the select group? What's this really about? Quit candy coating this with unity, community, an unnecessary thing. It's unconstitutional. And Mr. Yanis, you know it. Being in, in legislation, you know it. Enough's enough of this. This does not need to be done. This is not constitutional. This is irrelevant. This is not necessary. I mean, this is about a select behavior of who? Who is causing this, that you want this commission? Who? When you made that statement, I mean, that statement is leaving out tons of people. You're, you're, you're actually picking Christian, Muslim, disabled, undisabled. Well, there's, you know, you're picking white, black, women, men, I mean, this commission should be full of like hundreds of people on it. Really, the whole community should be on it. Hmm, that's why we have a constitution. You don't need this commission, and you darn well know it. This is absurd, unnecessary. It's not even, it doesn't even make sense. Who really wants this and why? I want that answer tonight. Who really wants it, Mr. Racky? Who really wants it, Mr. Taylor? Who really wants this and why? I never got that answer at the last one. What, are we gonna put a bunch of psychologists in this, psychiatrists in it? Who's gonna be these seven people that you're gonna select? A select thing. You're discriminating by doing that. That's total discrimination. You will not put this thing through. The community doesn't hardly know about it. You don't even get the viewpoint of the community. It's just you guys doing it. You're supposed to represent us, the residents. Mr. Vanderpool, I lived here longer than you. We never had this. We never needed it. Years, this country's been formed for hundreds of years. We don't need this. Why? Why? I ask you why again. I ask you what? The Bible clearly states this nation was formed on a Bible and a constitution. That's plenty. That's all we need. You abide by these things. That's how our nation was formed. Quit bringing in socialism and all these communistic ideas. Because that's what it is. That's what it pertails to. I'm sorry. You abide by this. That's okay. what you took oath to. Thank you, Ms. Ryan. Thank you, Ms. Ryan. Okay, I'll take you, uh, you. man, with your hand up. My far left.
Ma'am, if you don't mind, could you, if you want to grab one of the, um, yeah, there you go. Hello. I say, if you want to, yeah, there it is. Hello, Mr. Taylor, Ms. Racky, the rest of you. I wholeheartedly agree with Jackie. And I want to say that this nation was founded upon scripture. The scripture has a lot to say about what you're trying to bring into this city. In the book of Romans, in the New Testament, Chapter 1, for the, we're starting verse 18, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even to the eternal power his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were they thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like the corruptible man, into birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things, Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness, to the lust of their own bodies, uh, a lust of their own hearts, to dis dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worship and serve the creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, God... Ma'am, I'm going to ask you to talk about the Community Alliance, okay? Yes, if you want to talk about... It's all about, it's about bringing in the whole LGBT agenda, the communist ideology, and we don't want it in our city. And neither does the Lord, who created this nation. <clears throat> you understand? That's what the scripture is all about. And you're gonna stop me again if I continue? No, what I'm going to ask, ma'am, is that you speak on the agenda item we have here tonight. If you're That's just going to... exactly what I'm speaking about. This whole agenda is another attempt to bring in this so-called diversion committee is all about excluding Christianity and bringing in us as favoring certain groups like the LGBT agenda and excluding Christians, bringing in Islam, excluding Christianity. That's what this is all about. And we know it. You think we're stupid, don't you? Well, we're not. We know exactly what this is. It's another attempt at the same thing you've tried to do before. That's what this whole agenda is. This little uh, inclusion agenda. It's about exclusion of Christianity. Thank you. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Who'd like to be next? Take Miss Early. Good evening, Mayor, City Council members. Let me adjust this, please. Um, I am as an immigrant, Hispanic. Somebody who couldn't be more diverse than a few people here. I really wonder you, the need for this. You went from Diversity and Inclusion Commission to Community Alliance Commission, which I find interesting that you, the goal is to welcome, accept, and respect, and make people feel safe. All of those that you, the mayor, and Mr. Radke and other few people had denied to me. When you are trying to bring this committee, remember we have the ethnic committee. The reasons that you are staying, why you are creating this new commission, which also will be a financial burden for the city, are already the goal of the ethnic committee. 
You had discriminated me, Mayor <coughs> Taylor, for being in that committee. And you are talking about creating another one that more likely you will discriminate me to be part of. So please, we don't need that. We need to improve the ones that we already have. When you are trying to deceive people with a community alliance commission name, why is Mrs. Melanie here? She handles anything about the relations, and she does a great job. Why do we need another commission with seven people that you are, pick, you are gonna pick hand and say these are the ones, while you are gonna discriminate and deny other people that do not fit your lefty agenda. And me, I vote for President Trump. You will not, be, I will not be part of that. You promise, Mr. Um, the former chairperson for the Ethnic Committee who begged you to allow me to be in the Ethnic Committee and you told him not. There is no one Hispanic in that committee. So you are discriminating in another committee and trying to create a false idea of unity. <clears throat> we don't need it. And asking you, improve what is there. Improve yourself. The, the chapter says the way you should address residents. That is not happening. Maybe you need to go and do that yourself. Creating a, com a commission is a false narrative that you are hiding, and you need to focus. Please, let's get together. Appoint me to a dead need committee, and I promise you that we will grow the community, we will unite, no matter where people ask, come from, because there is no somebody else better to unite the immigrant community than an immigrant itself, because we speak the same broken English. And we feel the same way because we are making this our home when we let at home. I know you welcome, you do not welcome me in a Sterling Heights and you wanna pay my moving expenses out of the country, Mayor. But that is not welcoming. So I'm asking you the favor. Let's work together. Do, we don't need this. Don't start something that doesn't need to segregate people more than we already are. Let's work together in what we have, improve it, Seek for the greatness of the city in a way that calls the attention to everybody. We can sit together and talk about that. We can sit together and talk about differences, about diversity. I'm Christian. Should I be discriminated because of that? I'm being. So let's talk about that. Let's handle it in a civil, respectful way. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Early. Anyone else on this item? I'll take you in the back with your hand up. Councilman, Mayor Taylor, unity is great, but more than unity, this city needs belonging. Before you can have unity, you need to have a sense of belonging. I am also a Christian, and right now I am literally thanking God, because from the people we've seen walk up here tonight, it's clear that something needs to be done to fight for people who deserve inclusion and belonging in this community. This is where Sterling Heights is at right now. This is where we're at. Where do you want this city to go in the future? Do you want this city to be a place where LGBT families come and feel safe raising their family? Do you want this to be a community where veterans with disabilities can come and retire knowing that they'll be taken care of and they'll be able to access the local buildings? It is important that we continue to fight for the rights of all of our citizens. We heard some wonderful Bible verses tonight, but you know what we didn't hear? Anything from the Quran, anything from the Tao Te Ching. This should be a diverse city. We should continue to fight, to grow and expand, to keep up with the times, not work backwards. Yes, we need to defend the right for people to practice Christianity in this country. 
but we need to defend the right for people to practice Islam and to practice Buddhism. That's why this committee is so important. Inclusion is not a matter of political correctness. It is uncomfortable, it is honest, and it is introspective. I hope that tonight Sterling Heights makes the right choice to stay on the progressive side of history because we want to be a city that's moving forward, that's being inviting. I'd be scared to live here if we don't get some sort of representation for people with disabilities, for the LGBT community, I don't feel comfortable living in a community like that. And I know a lot of young people that feel the same as me. Where do you want to take this city from here? With that being said, I do have some questions. This council has pointed out multiple times over the past months that they do not approve of cherry picking. If this is to be a diverse council, how will we Make sure that it's a diverse council without cherry picking. If that's important, I understand. But I don't want a diverse council of white cis individuals representing the LGBT community. I don't want a whole council, council of perfectly abled individuals that are trying to understand someone who is differently abled. I understand that cherry picking can lead to lots of problems, but also, People deserve representation. They deserve to know that someone who has been through their struggles that is part of their community knows what they need. Mr. Jefferson asked, how could we implement something like this? Well, I would say that the people that would be chosen for this kind of committee have already been fighting for these things. My second question is, why would they need a year to understand where to go? If we pick the right people, if we pick the people that have already been fighting this fight and screaming and kicking and shouting all this time to get representation, they know where we need to go. They know what signs have to be on the bathrooms. They know what ramps need to be added where. Six months. I don't, I don't feel that they need a whole year. Maybe if they need more time after that, it can be postponed, but why wait so long for change? Why not commit to making a a more diverse and welcoming Sterling Heights for everyone, starting today. All right, I'm gonna have to stop you there. Thank you very much, though. Thank, Thank you. you. I'll take you in the back, Miss. Okay, ma'am, you want me to pass on you and have you come back up, or are you ready? Thank you, yes. Okay. Um, I just found it uh, very interesting that part of the process and the whole, you know, community alliance was all about being welcomed in Sterling Heights, being accepted, being respected, feeling safe, provide an action plan. That is such a joke coming from this council, especially you, Mayor Taylor especially you, Councilman Radke. It's an absolute hypocrisy. So for you to come here and pretend that you want this alliance when you yourself are cyberbullying residents of Sterling Heights, when you yourself are publicly denouncing citizens that disagree with your agenda, shame on you. Shame on every single one of you standing here and allowing that to happen. And yet you want the community here to believe that you want some community alliance to include everyone. Well, what about including the people that come here and fight for this city every single day? What about including people that disagree with your agenda? This is a Christian 
nation. Every founding document was found on the Bible. To pretend that doesn't exist pretends the absolute foundation of America is different, and it's not. This council took an oath to respect the Constitution of the United States, and guess what? It is the supreme law of the land. Islam practices Sharia law, what is 100% in conflict with the Point of order, absolute Chairman. law of this right, land. Hold on, yes, Mr. Radke. Let's not have uh, attacks upon religion here over uh, a community alliance, please. Excuse me. Yes. This is part hold, of that because Mr. it's Chairman. a fringe Ma group. Ma'am, Ma yes. Ma your time is being held. This is a procedural ruling I have to make, okay? So just hold on one second. You'll get your time back. You won't lose a second. I'm not convinced she was attacking religion. She's bringing up her interpretation of Islam and I haven't heard any attack yet, but we'll keep an eye out for it. Go ahead, ma'am. It's facts, Mr. Ratke. Maybe you should do a little history. Christianity in this country and the supreme law of the land, which is the Constitution, is set and bound by all of us. And that constitution protects our freedom to practice our Christian faith as a nation. So this community alliance that is a pig with lipstick on it is much less about an agenda, or I should say much more about an agenda. And the fact that you have to have someone here promoting as some political PR tells you everything you need to know. This community, like it's been stated by several people, doesn't need another alliance, doesn't need another community group. You need to get along. You need to be kind to one another. You need to, how about bringing Christianity back into our schools, since that's our American culture. We have a culture of faith, Christian faith, family. That's our culture in America. How come we're not protecting that and how come we're not standing for that? Faith, family, freedom, and our flag. That's what America stands for. Those are the things you should be fighting for. That's the kind of community that we want to live in. And that's also the kind of committee. Why don't we get a committee that we practice and focus on that council? Why don't we? Why don't we actually practice the foundations of our country and what brought us together as a nation. We've gotten so far away, and this progressive, you see where it's gotten us so far, absolutely in chaos. Thank you. Anyone else on this item? Yes, miss, in the front. Hi, Brandy Wright. I'm a resident. Um, I wasn't sure if I was going to speak tonight, but after hearing all of this, I decided I will. First of all, I think some of the people in this room need to actually go back and read the Constitution, because if they did, they would realize that there is no reference to God. Our founding fathers did that for a reason, because we are not a Christian nation. We are a nation that allows all religions. Um, part of the problem here is there's so much hatred and anger just in this room towards anyone who is different than these people. And I think that's the whole point of a diversity and inclusion commission or a community alliance, if you want to call it that. Um, just saying, you know, we don't want these LGBT people coming in. That's hatred because somebody's different. So we need to be able to promote that kind of diversity in the city. The reason my husband and I purchased a home here to begin with is because we wanted to raise our children in a city that was diverse, that included everyone, that cared about everyone. And unfortunately, that's not really what I've been seeing here lately. Um, so I really do hope that you think about doing something that does allow less of the hatred and anger and more of the positivity and acceptance. Um, I do have a question, though, why it will take so long to get it going. 
diversity isn't something that's just going to be put on hold while we decide to create this commission. So I think it's something that we should try and create sooner rather than later. Um, just a few miles down the road in Warren, an African-American family had their house shot out, shot at and a brick thrown through, through their window because they're black and they have a Black Lives Matter sign. You know, we aren't in a bubble here in Sterling Heights where it's utopia. So I think um, it's something that we really need to be concerned with and actually uh, do something about. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Anyone else on this item? Okay, council, um, all right, come on up. <clears throat> Howard Keyes. Good evening, Mayor. Good evening, Council. Good evening, you gentlemen, you ladies, and good evening to the audience. Uh, I, first of all, I've got nothing against anybody's religion, their race. I don't care if they're homosexual, as long as they don't bother me or children in a sexual manner. Now, I'm talking about the committee. We, I don't believe we need another committee. All it's going to turn into is going to be about diversity, uh, ex exclusion and equity. Now, everyone has talked tonight about diversity. I'm not going to talk about that. And I'm not going to talk about inclusion. Everybody's talked about that. Basically, inclusion, what it would amount to if we got another commission, would be uh, preferential treatment for blacks. Now, I know you, a lot of you people don't want to hear this stuff, but I'm, I'm, I'm right to the point and straightforward. I don't care what anybody thinks. Okay, equity. Equity is basically going to turn out to be a thing for reparations. Now, reparations is a term that blacks use when they want something. And it's been going on for the last, approximately the last two years. And uh, they always talk about slavery and Jim Crow. But they conveniently never go back to the years 1530. That's 1530 to 1780. 1780 when blacks had whites as their slaves. We never hear about that. So if you want to have uh, reparations for blacks, that's fine, as long as you also give up reparations for people of Caucasian persuasion. Uh, as far as this new committee, as of July 1st of last year, I'm going to round these figures off to the nearest half a point. Our whites were 83 point. 83.5%, Asians 7.5%, Blacks 6%, Latinos 2.5%. Now we have 11 members on this committee as of right now. If that's the case, we ought to have uh, equal representation of, by the population. We should have eight whites and the rest one of each of the other. Now, right now, by the picture that I looked at, I, I haven't met these people. I'm only going by the picture that I saw, a colored picture. You have right now four blacks, which would make up 36.36%. Now, this is racism. Blacks are going to com always complain about not having enough representation for this or that. Well, this is the same thing. Uh, I think that about covers it. Thank you very much for your time. I think so, too. Uh, anyone else on this item, please raise your hand if you'd like to speak right now. If not, we're going to move on to a motion from the City Council. Council, we need a motion. Mayor Taylor. Mrs. Saransky. Resolved to introduce the ordinance amending Chapter 2 of the Code of Ordinances to create a community alliance. Support. It's been moved and supported. Any discussion, Mrs. Saransky? Yes, thank you, Mayor Taylor. Let me read my little history search on Google. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion. That is part of the Constitution. And yes, many of our residents, most Americans, have been told and, and do believe that we are a Christian nation. 
We do, I am, a, I am a Catholic woman. I sent my kids to Catholic schools. I pray every day. I go to mass every week. I am a Christian woman. But that does not preclude the facts. The facts are that this, and I have family members and people I live with that I know have studied that Constitution, so we talk about this. The Constitution does not protect only Christians. The Constitution protects everyone, every single human of religion, of, of race, of any belief that they have. That's the beauty of being America. And yes, there are, we as a council and some of our council members, and I won't ever exclude myself, can do better at being inclusive, at being welcoming, at being kind. We need to do better. This is our start. This isn't our answer. We don't have a specific function going yet. We have guidelines that Ms. Um, Davis was and has worked so hard at, and a lot of people have worked hard to really present what we hope can be a good start for this commission. This commission will give us a platform or a, a springboard. I do disagree, and this is something I will say that it, although it, we do want residents of diverse background, cherry picking isn't always the case. Because you all, as you, I have said before, you don't know that my great great grandparents were freed slaves. I don't look like a black woman, but I have that history. I, however, although I have that blood, I didn't grow up as a black woman. I didn't get discriminated against. I have that luxury. And those that have had any discrimination need to have a voice. Of all of the people in our commissions, how many are of marginalized backgrounds? That's what we need to look at. Not just this particular commission, but the entire who needs representation. So this is why I am very much in favor of starting the process. Obviously, the anger, the vehemence, the very one-sided belief that some of the presidents have come up and, and, view, and spoke and, and voiced, I'm hoping it's because they really don't know the, under, they don't understand the experience others have had. I'm hoping that they haven't had the chance to talk with somebody to understand what they're going through and that they just need the opportunity sometime in their lives to, to understand. This is a start, as I said, and that's why I'm voting for it. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Rossi. Ms. Zarko? Thank you, Mayor Taylor. When I first read this over in our uh, agenda, I didn't have any questions. I went through it, I understood it. I saw that we were trying to be a better community. And then we got emails, got phone calls um, of somebody else's per, a different perspective than what I, what I saw. So I did have a long conversation this afternoon um, about this other uh, perception. You know, I try to live my life where I don't judge others because I don't want to be judged. I mean, there is somebody that we're going to have to answer to that's a whole lot bigger than anybody sitting in this room, and that's the way we should run our lives. Um, I know right now we are in such a divided nation that it scares me that we can't find common ground. So when we're trying to move in a positive direction to make sure that that doesn't happen in our community, it's difficult to... Um, listen to people who have those um, judgments about others or putting people in boxes or in, in not understanding that not everything is the way you see it. You know, we could see the same incident in this room. We can hear the same statement, but each one of us is going to come to a different conclusion. And unless we talk about what we see and what we hear, we're not going to have that dialogue. I mean, I want say, uh, Sterling Heights to be the best city that it can be. And you know, we aren't the city that we were back in 1968. 
It wasn't long after we were coming out of the riots in Detroit. I moved here, we were still called the Sterling Whites. So the city has progressed through all of this to make sure that we include people, to make sure that they're protected. And not just one person or another, anybody that came here that spoke tonight has the same protections, the same freedoms, the same rights. We all do. We all come from the same place. If you believe in Christianity, there's a little bit of you know, each of us in another one. So, I mean, I mean, that's how I feel. But you know, I look at this and, and I, actually it was Mr. Bohorsky that brought it up, so I'm not taking credit for it. Mm -hmm. But we were thinking about how our children have a different perspective of growing up with diversity than we did when we were growing up. And he's really a lot younger than I am. But our, my daughter's colorblind. It doesn't matter to her um, where anybody comes from. And I think that's part of education as they grow up, going to college, being with different people, um, being out on their own, exploring different religions, um, having discussions. I think that's all part of them becoming the people that they are. When I go into a third grade classroom in one of our public schools to read to the kids, they don't see color, they don't see religion, they just see one another. And as, as adults, that's what we have to see. And it might take, it's, may take us longer because it's a lot easier to teach a child a foreign language than it is an adult. And maybe that's what we need is more education. But I think this, this is going to make us better. You know what, we heard criticism when we started the African American Coalition. Now there's a waiting list for people that want to be a part of it, both black and white. People want to learn. And I think that's what this is all about, is how we can be better people. So, like I said, I listened and I, I had a long conversation where I took up a lot of time from people today. Um, what I'm sure they could have been doing something else in order for me to work the, well, you know, through this. So to me, I'm in favor of this. I think it's a start. I don't believe some of the things that I heard to the, where we're going to go and turn this into something that it's not, but I want us to be a better city and I think this is a way of doing it. So I will be voting for this this evening. Thank you, Ms. Sarko, Mrs. Schmidt. Thank you, Mayor Taylor. Um, I want to start by saying ethnicity is not the only reason for a bias or a discrimination. And I think we need to start with that mentality first. There's so much that we need to learn about each other. Um, and we need to be open to learning about each other and not fear difference. There's a lot of fear in this room. There's, there's, what I'm hearing is that we're gonna be protecting one group over another. No, we wanna learn how to understand different groups, different religions. Um, and our Ethnic Community Commission com Committee does a fantastic job about ethnic differences. But there are other differences. There are handicaps. There are uh, religious differences. There are lifestyle differences that none of us should fear. We're all human. We all breathe the same air. And that's what I believe this committee is about. It's not about excluding Christians. No one ever said anything about excluding Christians. I, along with many members of council, uh, I, I, uh, I believe all of us are Christian up here at some level or another. Excuse me? Yeah, you know what, you're out of order, ma'am. We didn't interrupt you while you were talking and we don't need your comments from the back. We do not need your comments from the back. It's disrespectful and you can continue, Mrs. Schmidt. So we're not trying to give preferential treatment. We're not even trying to um, pinpoint different people. We want to know 
where other people are feeling biased against them and why, and how we as a community can make them feel as welcome as the rest of us, as welcome as I feel, as welcome as my children feel. And Mrs. Yarko is right, or Mr. Bohorsky is right, my children grew up in a far different world than I did. They went through Warren Consolidated Schools, one of the most diverse school districts in the state of Michigan. And you know what? I'm proud of that. I'm glad that they have that diverse um, acceptance of everyone. They didn't see color. You're right, Mr. Bohorsky, because I can remember a conversation with my son when he was young in first grade and asked him about a particular student. And I said, was that the African-American boy? And he said, what does that mean, Mom? What does that mean? Because kids don't care. They just want to play with Sally. And they don't care what color Sally's skin is. But I, that's not the main goal of this, in my opinion, of this committee. Our ethnic committee helps to educate us on different races. This is other biases that go on in every community. And yes, we are Sterling Heights. We have other biases in our community. Do we like to admit it? Probably not, but we should admit it more than we do. So um, as far as the process of applying for this, um, I believe it's through the chair to who would like to take that question? Mr. Kashupski? <laughs> You're on. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Ms. Schmidt. Um, the application process is going to be, uh, there's going to be a, a nice revamped application process that allows for essays to explain uh, some background of the individual that wants to apply for this, why they're interested in the commission, um, what makes them feel they're unique and able to help um, with the purpose, the main purpose of, of the commission itself. So it, it's not just going to be a check the box application. There will be um, an opportunity for council to get some insight. And as with all applic applicants, council members can contact them and talk to them and get to know them better and, and understand um, why they're interested in this particular commission. Thank you. So that being said, when I look through these applications, what I'm looking for is someone that brings something to the table that we need to learn about more in our community, but also someone who wants to learn about other people sitting at the table. They're not just there for their issue or their bias. I'm looking at someone that is going to, I'm looking for someone that's going to try to be the catalyst to our community for accepting biases. So not someone with just their viewpoint and their mission, but the mission as a whole. So when filling out your application, that's what I'm looking for. So um, that being said, I have nothing further, Mayor Taylor. Okay, thank you, Ms. Schmidt. Council, anyone else? Mr. Yannis. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So I, I think my um, fellow council members have said a lot of what was on my mind and, and uh, it's gonna be a long night if we um, continue on this path. So I'm not going to do that. But what I, I, what I do wanna do is um, just say that I was, you know, when this was brought to us a month ago, I was, I was, it was, it was uh, told to me that I was very hard on the administration. And, uh, and frankly, I thought right, rightfully so. I didn't think the administration raised uh, uh, to the level that it could have in bringing us uh, this uh, um, proposed ordinance. And I just want to say that I think uh, that the administration, after taking our feedback, rose to the occasion and came back with a very, very good ordinance and it's something I hope that we can improve on. So I just want to say thank you to the administration for listening to us and, um, and putting uh, a lot more thought and effort into this and coming back with a much better product. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Yanez. Mrs. Koski. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. 
I would like to add my version of this committee to what has been said this evening. Some of the comments that were made from the audience tonight is not where I envision this committee to be. I thought of this as Team Sterling Heights, that the committee would be composed of residents of Sterling Heights with one goal in mind, and that goal would be the betterment of Sterling Heights, to make it a better place to live, work, play, have healthy relationships, and respect each other. Our police department, that's exactly what they do. They have their community outreach, where they reach out to the residents to find out what the issues are and to make them better, to make the people, the residents hold on of one Sterling second. Heights. Could you hold on? Salem, you've been interrupting all night. I don't know what the <clears throat> issue is, but if you could just please stop talking during our meeting. This room really reflects a lot of noise. The acoustics, I don't know that it was specifically designed this way, but the acoustics are such that if you're talking outside back there, we can hear you up here and it's distracting. And so there's no reason to be talking during the meeting. Please just have the respect that we showed and wait until you have the floor to talk. Ms. Koski, please go on. That the people <clears throat> would work towards a better Sterling Heights. Changes always take place. We can always do things a little bit better. I would like to see the committee composed of people not because of the color of their skin, the slant of their eyes, the color of their eyes, the color of their hair, the curly, non-curly, that doesn't make any difference. It should be people that care about Sterling Heights and want to make it a better place to make everyone feel respected and their opinion matter and to find out what their differences are, or I should say what their difficulties are. If they need help, as an example, we've been told that the core program is chore program is going to be eliminated. We don't have the $100,000 that it's going to take to do it ourselves. So what's going to happen to the seniors, the disabled, that can't mow their lawns or plow their snow? I'm talking about caring about your resident, caring about your neighbor. If somebody has a difficulty, be able to step in there and help them. So that's my vision of this community. I would love to have it called the residents of Sterling Heights team. So this is a start and I don't want it to be construed as total religious type of committee because I don't foresee it as that because everyone can worship as they choose to worship. I don't see this committee as being that. That's all I have to say, thank you. Mr. Radke. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You know, this is a, it's a hard one for me because uh, I think that this committee doesn't go far enough, but I just listening to the voices of residents in this room, I see just how important it is too. You know, when people tell you who they are, believe them. And I always find it fascinating, just to go back to one more thing, when people claim that somehow they have more purchase on this city because they've lived here a while. I've lived here for 23 years. And I think I have as much right to, you know, have the city that I want as anyone else. But if you've lived here for a year or six months, if you're a resident of our city, I want you to feel included I want you to feel like you have a place here, that you're respected, that your opinion is honored, and that you know you can come to the government and say, this is what I want, this is how I want my city to be. I don't think because I've been here for 23 years, somehow I have a, a greater right than any other resident who's been here for one year. But I also think this committee is, is watered down. It doesn't go far enough. And just from the voices in this room earlier, I think the residents at home will see the same thing. <laughs> The problem that it's meant to address was right here in this room addressing the council. And it's so obvious. I think talking of unity is important, but I think that having a diversity, equity, and inclusion commission, I don't understand the reason to change the name or to dress it up in some other hat. 
you know, the purpose is the purpose. And if the purpose of the community alliance is not diversity, equity, and inclusion, then I'd like to know what is the purpose? Because it sounds like uh, a consultant kind of dressed it up in a little suit to make it more palatable. And at the end of the day, we're talking about making sure that everyone has a place in Sterling Heights, everyone is respected, everyone is included, and that they want to live here and they want their friends to live here and they want their families to live here and they want to raise their families here. And that's why my family moved here. I grew up in the city of Detroit. You know, we moved here after my mother was mugged on the street in front of our home in 1997. We moved here. And I always felt welcome. And I always felt like everyone here wanted this city to be better. You know, I love this city because it gave me everything I ever wanted. I, I was educated here. You know, I, I played with the kids down my block here. And to see people come to our meeting or other things and, and want to divide us, it makes me so sad. So with that being said, um, I have a few questions. Uh, I think that they're probably to either Mr. Kashubsky or Mrs. Davis um, uh, through the chair. Um, I guess first, how many uh, commissioners or committee members does the Ethnic Advisory Committee have compared to this proposed commission? Ms. Davis. Thank you. Um, you're asking how many members are on the Ethnic Advisory Committee. Ethnic Advisory Committee, the yes. Ethnic Community Committee, I believe it's 15. 15. Mm -hmm. So I guess my question, which would be the follow-up, would be why does this commission only seven? Because if, if we can have 15 people who want to uh, improve the, the ethnic uh, community in Sterling Heights, we have a commission here that at least I think is trying to, to change the, the, the diversity, equity, and inclusion that goes around with religion, disability, uh, able, you know, um, uh, poverty, for example, to make sure everyone's included. Why is there so much fewer there than on the Ethnic Advisory Committee? I think it's an initial number, and correct me if I'm wrong, Mark, but Mr. Kozubski, but I think that that's an initial number that can be added to if we decide to change that. Is that true? Uh, the, um, thank you, um, Mr. Radke. The, um, the Ethnic uh, Community Committee has uh, actually 11 members on it. 11. Um, 11, not 15. Uh, sorry. Um, the mm -hmm. um, number that we chose for seven was to get highly motivated individuals in there um, to get this started. If, if the council wants to raise that number, uh, uh, as part of this, and that's the way they want to do it. Tonight's the introduction. Mm -hmm. If the will of council is to make it nine members or 11 members, you know, that's something that council can definitely uh, recommend, and we'll take that back with us when we bring it back if it passes tonight for introduction. Okay, I appreciate that. Um, also, will some of the, because as I understand this committee, the, <clears throat> the, the uh, ethnic advisory committee will coexist with this committee, correct? Yes, it's not going to be a part of this committee, but I imagine that there will be a number of times that they're, you know, that they will support each other and work mm -hmm. collaboratively. Will some of the responsibilities of the Ethnic Advisory Committee be passed on to this committee? What I'm thinking of is the Diversity Distinction Awards, which seems to be, it would seem to be more appropriate to be under the Community Alliance or the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Commission than it would be the Ethnic Advisory Committee. I don't think there are any plans at this point of taking anything that the Ethnic Community, community Committee does mm -hmm. right now and moving it to this commission. However, like I said, I can see that that would be, because of all the things you mentioned, that might be something that they work on collaboratively. Mm -hmm. um, I also agree with some of the audience members that this, this timeline, it just takes too long to set up. The problems exist. They're in this room right now. And the idea that we're going to wait uh, two years or a year and a half, I, I think that that timeline is just way too long. I, I know they need some time to set up and, and make a plan, but I, I would urge all haste. Uh, you know, so I guess I have to think about this because uh, while it's good that we're doing something, I think it's a half measure and, and not nearly enough. That's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I had a few thoughts that I want to share and I'll try to be brief. Um, I don't want to step on any of my colleagues toes. I thought a number of my colleagues comments were particularly on point. Um, I really appreciated Ms. Zarco's comments. I thought they were incredible. Not to say that others weren't, but I do want to single hers out. We heard from four or five residents tonight, white, 
Christian residents who are concerned that this seven member board that's not going to be compensated and is not going to be really have any real authority except for the authority that the council delegates to it, the authority to make recommendations and then we may or may not even accept those recommendations, but that's what we're talking about here. And we heard from white Christian residents who expressed fear that they would be excluded from that group. Now, I wanna ask the residents who came up here and spoke to take what I have to say with an open mind. Allow me just a few minutes to tell you why I think this commission is so important. If you look at our city, if you look at our city council, if you look at our city department heads, if you look at our city organization, if you look at our city judges, we're pretty much all white. And I would say we're by and large all Christian. Now if you look at the, court, the county board of commissioners, I'm not aware of anybody at the county level at any leadership role who's openly practicing a religion other than Christianity. They're by and large all white. The judges are by and large all white. The judges, I don't know what their religion is, but I'm not aware of any single judge in the county who's openly practicing a different religion other than Christianity. At the state level, state level we've got about 110 or so state representatives. I am personally not aware of any that is, not, is practicing a religion other than Christianity. They're by and large white. The state senate, state federal level. All of your representatives at almost every single level are by and large white, by and large Christian. Imagine if you weren't white and imagine if you weren't Christian. How you might feel looking at who represents you. Now we're talking about a community alliance group, a, a commission. Okay, not to downplay the importance of this commission, but we're not exactly talking about the Supreme Court of the United States. We're not exactly talking about the United States Senate. Imagine if every level of government you look at, every position of power, every system is made up of people that do not look like you, do not share your beliefs, and may or may not be representing you. Now, Channel all the concern and fear and uncertainty you have about this community alliance commission and imagine being a person living in this country, seeing every single person that represents them and leads them as being somebody different. That is precisely why this community alliance commission is so important to me. We need to be able to intentionally give voice to people who don't have a voice, who may not feel that they're being represented. And the palpable fear that I heard from the speakers today about how this is so wrong and so bad and so dangerous for our city is precisely the reason why I think it's so important. Now, I'm not gonna make preconceived judgments about whether it goes far enough or it goes too far. I think that this is one of the areas where I don't wanna put a whole lot of restrictions on it or guidelines. I want to just have, a, have the ability to pick good, de excuse me, good dedicated people who wanna make a difference, that want to have a unified city, that wanna make recommendations about ways that we can improve for the benefit of every single resident here. We take for granted, it seems like everybody is sort of in, in agreement that the Ethnic Community Committee is a great benefit to the city, and I agree. They're celebrating their diversity and celebrating the differences with, within different ethnicities, and we've all enjoyed our, I mean, everybody, even the people who've spoke here against this commission have, I've seen you at the Ethnic Community Committee. I've heard you talk about how good the Ethnic Community Committee is. Why should we limit it to just celebrating 
differences between people of different ethnicities, people of different abilities, people of different backgrounds, people of different socioeconomic statuses, people of different religions, people of different diverse backgrounds, members of the LGBTQ community. We can all benefit by having a city that, that includes everyone, is welcoming to everyone, and we can't think of it as being exclusionary. That's not, what we're, that's not what we're trying to do. And my goodness, I mean, think about if you feel as a white, you know, cisgendered Christian person that this community alliance is somehow going to discriminate against you? Good heavens. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, we're just trying to help people who need a hand, who need to have their voice heard. You all have had your voice heard. You all have had your voice heard. You've always had your voice heard. There's never been a time where you've looked at your leaders and said, I don't think I can have my voice heard because I don't think they share the same experiences that I have. You've never once looked at the President of the United States or your senator or your governor or the judge, if you happen to be in front of the judge, and thought, you know what, this is a person that just simply does not understand the way I experience America as a white, straight, cisgendered Christian person. So we have to look beyond what we know and encourage all those voices to be heard. That's what we're doing. I'm enthusiastic about it. So I'm going to leave it at that. And I would say, um, council, anything else? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries, 7-0. Move on to the next item. Thank you. We'll move on to the next item on our agenda tonight, which is the consent agenda. Is there anyone who'd like to speak on any item on tonight's consent agenda? If not, council, we need a motion. Mr. Mayor. Mrs. Koski. Move to approve the consent agenda. Support. It's been moved and supported. With no discussion, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next item on our agenda is a consideration item, and this is to consider approval of memorandums of understanding between the City of Sterling Heights and MAPE Professional Technical Employees and MAPE Supervisory Employees Union. We have a presentation, excuse me, from our City Manager, Mark Vanderpool. Mr. Vanderpool. Thank you, Mayor. I'll be brief because I reported on this at the August 5th City Council meeting. This agenda item pertains to updating the funeral leave policy and all of our collective bargaining agreements. On uh, August 5th, we started with uh, uh, three bargaining units and what's before you tonight is two additional bargaining units and uh, we hope to have the remaining bargaining units to you uh, in the very near future. Uh, basically, the funeral leave uh, that was in our collective bargaining agreements was 25 years old and simply needed to be updated to create a greater, to uh, eliminate inequities, uh, to allow time for bereavement, and to be less intrusive in terms of uh, reporting requirements. So unless the city council would like me to go through the whole report, I'll leave it at that and I'd be happy to address any questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Vanderpool. Is there anyone in the audience who'd like to speak on this item? Not council, we need a motion. Mayor Taylor. Mrs. Schmidt. Resolved to approve the memorandums of an understanding between MAPE Professional and Technical Employees and MAPE Supervisory Employees Union and authorize the mayor and city clerk to sign the memorandums on behalf of the city. Support. I moved and supported. Is there any discussion? Uh, no, I don't think so. Council? No discussion. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next item on our agenda is to consider pay rate increases for election inspectors who work on election day. We have a presentation from our city clerk, Melanie Riska. Ms. Riska. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so you know that election inspectors are the cornerstone of our democracy. They are on the front lines of at, at the precincts and at our, at, our, at our absent voter counting board to ensure that every vote counts. Election inspectors are typically paid a flat rate for a very long day 
which starts at 6 a.m. and sometime doesn't end until the wee hours of the morning. Um, so from what I can tell from my research, um, the flat rate for election inspectors in Sterling Heights has not been increased in recent history. And surrounding communities have taken strides to increase pay to attract new workers. Election inspectors are typically retired voters who have the flexibility to work that long day and then not work the next day so that they can recoup. Um, amid the COVID-19 pandemic, many retirees simply can't work elections um, for various concerns, and this has left communities across the country um, struggle at, to find people to work. In fact, um, the city experienced a 50% drop in our election inspector pool at the primary election, and that was primarily over concerns of COVID. Um, and as the 2020 um, turnout for November um, will likely hit a record high, in fact, we have over 94,000 registered voters now, um, and we expect that a turnout for this election to be around 75% or so. So it's gonna be necessary to ensure that we have the proper amount of staffing at our precincts and at our absent voter counting board. So to attract new election inspectors um, and to provide for a fair and equitable, uh, equitable compensation for our workers, I'm recommending an increase to the flat rate stipend for election inspectors beginning the November 20th election. Compared to our surrounding communities, and that's from which we pull from the same pool of voters to work at elections, our pay is about 20% less. Um, so with this proposed increase, um, this will put Sterling Heights um, at the top of the pay range, and that'll further enhance our ability to attract election workers. So our goal is to hire 405 election workers for the November 2020 election. Um, and that's gonna be an, inc if, if, we, if you do tonight um, approve this increase, it's gonna be about a $28,000 increase in our budget. Um, we were awarded a grant from the Civic, or from the Center for Tech and Civil Life um, for just over $65,000 for election purposes. So that grant will cover the increase of the election inspector pay increase for the 2020, um, 2021 budget. So I, at this time, I respectfully request that, the can, that council consider um, the base flat rate increase by position as presented um, and the extra in training rate will continue to be paid at the discretion of the clerk's office based on how many um, trainings people go to um, and so we'll be able to adjust that extra rate. And um, that's all I have, so thank you for your attention and I'm available for questions. Thank you, Ms. Riska. Is there anyone in the audience who'd like to speak on this item? Okay, sir. Name's Matthew Woods. Uh, I'm an election advisor for some campaigns and candidates. Uh, you said 90,000. What, what was the previous amount of registrants? Okay, sir, you can, so you can ask questions, but we don't go back and forth. Right. So if you wanna ask questions, we'll write them all down. And then when the entire audience is done, um, then we'll answer the questions at that time. Okay. Very good. Uh, I'd like to know what the previous amount is before the 90,000. Um, how did you come up with the 75%? Uh, the grant, what was the name of the company that gave that grant? You said a grant, um, I was curious. I think you said, um, get where they get is the center for something. I'd like to know the name of that. And uh, I would like to know the actual price they're being paid per day. If you could, you could just let me know those four things. All right? Okay. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak on this item? Anyone else on this item? If not, council, we need a motion. Mayor Taylor. Mrs. Arco. Resolve to approve uh, pay rate increases for election inspectors who work on election day as recommended by the city clerk. Support. It's been moved and supported. Any discussion? No, um, yes. Ms. Arco. Okay. Uh, probably early uh, primary time, it was brought to my attention by a young girl that's just getting ready to go to college, and she says, oh, I'm working the elections tomorrow. And I says, oh, where are you working? And she's a Sterling Heights resident, and she was working in Warren. And I says, why aren't you working in Sterling Heights? And she says, because Warren pays more than Sterling Heights. So that's when we started doing the research, and I'm glad we came up to the, with this conclusion because what was happening is in some of um, 
the advanced classes for some of our seniors that would be eligible to be a poll worker. You know, the cities were going in and recruiting kids to work the polls. So, and we were missing out on that and they're young. And like you said, they had the time to give a, a whole day because they weren't in school. So uh, I'm certainly glad this will hopefully improve our numbers and the uh, raise or lower the minimum a or the average age of our workers. So I'm hoping that that works. So thank you. Okay, thank you, Ms. Zarko, Ms. Schmidt. No, I have nothing. Mr. Radke. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just, as a former poll worker in Sterling Heights, I think it's long overdue and I'm so excited to vote for it. Uh, these, these workers really are the backbone of the election system on election day. Everybody kind of clicks refresh, refresh, refresh on the, on the web page to try to see the results. But without uh, enough election workers, those results are gonna stretch into the early morning or the next day and we're gonna have lines and have issues. So I commend Ms. Riska for bringing this forward and making sure not only are our employees paid fairly, which is always important, but also that we have enough employees to make sure that election day goes on without a hitch like it normally does in the Sterling Heights. Council, anyone else? No further discussion on, oh, you know what? Before we do that, Ms. Ms. Riska, do you mind answering some of the residents' questions about uh, yeah, the, fourth, the fourth so items he asked? Go ahead. Certainly, so the number of voters that we have right now, we just topped 94,000. We actually have 94,004 registered voters. Um, that's up from um, previous elections. So normally during um, presidential years, our election registration numbers inflate. I think the last, at the 2016 presidential election, I think we got up to about 89,000. So we're over that. Um, he asked about how do we come up with that 75% turnout? That is just an educated guess on my part. At the 2016 presidential election, we had about a 67% turnout. And based on the increase of AVs that we've received and the interest and the civic engagement, I'm, I'm guesstimating that we'll hit about 75% turnout. The grant um, that I spoke about came from the Center um, for Tech and Civic Life, so CTCL. Um, and then the rates, yeah, the, the gentleman was interested in the rates. Um, so just briefly, for, for example, an in-precinct per, in person, um, a chair would make, th at the <coughs> base flat rate would be 300, a co-chair 275, an electronic poll book inspector 260, an inspector 220, and then interns, which are 16 and 17 year olds, um, would be 100. Okay, thank you, Ms. Riska. Now, Council, with no further discussion, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next item on our agenda tonight is to consider nominations to City of Sterling Heights boards and commissions. Is there anyone in the audience who'd like to speak on this item? If not, Council, we're going to take these, I guess, one at a time. Uh, the first is the Board of Ordinance Appeals 1 alternate. This is a uh, open seat. City Council has the power of appointment to a term ending June 30th, 2022. Is there anyone on the City Council that would like to make that appointment? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Radke. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We're resolved to nominate uh, Elizabeth Vincent for consideration as an appointee to the Board of Ordinance Appeals 1 alternate at the October 20th, 2020 regular City Council meeting. Support. It's been moved and supported. Is there any discussion? Yes, please, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Radke. Yes, thank you. I, I nominated Liz uh, Vincent. She is an attorney. She formerly was an assistant uh, township attorney in Macomb Township, and she prosecuted uh, uh, people who did not keep their property up. She's very interested in this. I think that she'd be an excellent addition to the uh, Board of Ordinance Appeals one. That's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you, Mr. Radke. Council, any further discussion? No further discussion. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next is the Board of Ordinance Appeals 2, open seat to a partial term ending June 30th, 2022. This is a city council appointment. Is there anyone who'd like to make a nomination? Mayor Taylor. Mrs. Uh, Sarowski. Resolved to nominate Lauren Tackett for consideration as an appointee to the Board of Ordinance Appeals 2 alternate, excuse me, Ordinance Appeals 2 at the October 2022 uh, regular city council meeting. Support. It's been moved and supported. Is there any discussion? 
Um, I did go over this with her, uh, her resume, and I did leave her a couple of messages. I tried to reach out to Lauren. She is one of my neighbors. She just lives down the street from me. I have met her before. I think she would be an excellent um, addition. She does uh, have some experience in this area, so I think she'd be very good at that, and I appreciate uh, the opportunity to nominate her. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mrs. Srowski. Anyone else, Council? No further discussion. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next is the Board of Ordinance Appeals 2 alternate. There are two open spots. So this is a city council appointment to terms ending June 30th, 2023. If anybody has two nominations, we can take them at the same time or we can take them one at a time. Council? Hearing none, I would um, pass on this item and then go to the Zoning Board of Appeals alternates. These are Two openings, city council appointments to terms ending June 30th, 2023. Is there anyone else who would, uh, or is there a council member who would like to make two nominations or just one even? And once, going twice. Okay, then we will, I would entertain a motion to postpone the appointments or the nominations, I should say, to the Board of Ordinance Appeals to alternates and the Zoning Board of Appeals alternates to the October 20th, 2020 City Council meeting. So moved. Support. It's been moved and supported with no discussion. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. That concludes <clears throat> that item. Next item is to consider appointments to City of Sterling Heights boards and commissions. Is there anyone in the audience who'd like to speak on this agenda item? If not, a number of open seats here. The first is the Corridor Improvement Authority. This is a open seat to a uh, term ending June 30th, 2024. This is a mayoral appointment. Based on the recommendation of our administrative liaison, uh, I'd like to have Richard Leja appointed, L-E-J-A. Appointed to the Corridor Improvement Authority. Is there anyone who would make that motion for me? Mayor Taylor. Mrs. Zarco. On the recommendation of the mayor, resolved to appoint Richard Leja to the Corridor Improvement Authority to a term ending June 30th, 2024, subject to the appointee meeting the qualifications set forth in Charter 4.03 and taking the oath of office within two weeks. Support. It's been moved and supported. Is there any discussion? With no discussion, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much, Mrs. Zarco and Council. Next is the Economic Development Corporation Brownfield Authority. Uh, this, this board has three vacancies. All three are to different expiration dates. This is a mayoral appointment. i make sure I've got the... Okay. So for the first to the June 30th, 2021 expiration date, I'd like to appoint John Myers. Is there a council member who'll make that, that appointment for me? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Radke. Resolve to appoint John Myers III to the Economic Development Corporation Brownfield Authority to a, part, to a partial term ending June 30th, 2021, subject to the appointing meeting the qualifications set forth in Charter Subsection 4.03 and taking the oath of office within two weeks. Support. It's been moved and supported. Is there any discussion? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Radke. Yes. Uh, John Myers is a, is a friend of mine. He was formerly the general manager and part owner of, uh, of uh, C.J. Barrymore's in Clinton Township. I think he'd be an excellent addition to this. He's a businessman. And he just recently broke his leg, so I hope he's feeling better. Mm -hmm. Yes, I heard that. He was uh, supposed to join me for something last week, and uh, we wish him well and hope he's recuperating. Uh, with no further, dis any further discussion? With none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, two more appointments to this Economic Development Corporation Brownfield Authority Board. For the term ending June 30, 2025, I'd like to appoint Mike Vizenko. Is there anyone who will make that appointment for me? Mayor Taylor. Taylor. Uh, Mrs. Sarowski. Based on the recommendation of the mayor, resolved to appoint Mike Vizenko to the Economic Development Corporation Brownfield Authority to a partial term ending June 30th, 2025, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. All right, just making sure we have the right one. Subject to the appointee meeting the qualifications set forth in charge of subset 4.03 and taking the oath of office within two weeks. <coughs> Support. It's been moved and supported. Is there any discussion? No. 
No discussion. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next is the last appointment to the uh, Economic Development Corporation Brownfield Authority and for this one to the term ending June 30, 2026. I'd like to appoint Allison Bittner, Council. Is there somebody who'll make that appointment? Mayor Taylor. Mrs. Zarko. Resolve to appoint Allison Bittner to the Economic Development Corporation Brownfield Authority to a term ending June 30th, 2026, subject to the appointee meeting the qualifications set forth in Charter 4.03 and taking the oath of office within two weeks. Support. It's been moved and supported. Is there any discussion? With no discussion, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Council. Next is the... Elected Officials Compensation Commission. This is a five member board with two vacancies. Uh, vacancies are expiring June 30th, 2022 and June 30th, 2026. For the June 30th, 2022, I'd like to uh, reappoint Lori Doty. Is there a council member who'll make that nomination or appointment for me, I should say? Mayor Taylor. Mrs. Strowski. Based on the recommendation of the mayor, resolve to appoint Lori Doty to the elect elected officials compensation commission to a partial term ending June 30th, 2022, subject to the appointee meeting the qualifications set forth in charter subset 4.03 and taking the oath of office within two weeks. Support, it's been moved and supported. Is there any discussion? Mm -hmm. No discussion, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. Next is the Elected Officials Compensation Commission. To the second vacancy is to a term ending June 30, 2026. I'd like to appoint Pashka Wikai. Is there anyone who will make that motion for me? Mayor Taylor. Mrs. Srowski. Based on the recommendation of the mayor, resolved to appoint Pashka Wikai to the Elected Officials Compensation Commission to a partial term ending June 30th, 2026, subject to the appointee meeting the qualifications set forth in Charter Subset 4.03 and taking the oath of office within two weeks. Support. Support. It's been moved and supported. Is there any discussion? No. With no discussion, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, that's it for my appointments. We do have two additional boards with one appointment each. First is the Arts Commission. This is a open appointment to a partial term ending June 30th, 2024. City Council holds the power of appointment for the Arts Commission. Is there anyone who'd like to make this appointment? Mayor Taylor. Mrs. Schmidt. Resolved to appoint Amanda Cost to the Arts Commission to a partial term ending June 30th, 2024. Subject to the appointee meeting the qualifications set forth in Charter 4.03 and taking the oath of office within two weeks. Support. It's been moved and supported. Is there any discussion? No. No discussion. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Last is the Solid Waste Management Commission, the five-member board with one vacancy. This is for a term ending June 30th, 2022. Council would like to make an appointment. Mayor Taylor. Mrs. Zarko. Resolved to appoint Henry Smith to the Solid Waste Management Commission to a partial term ending June 30th, 2022, subject to the appointee meeting, the qualifications set forth in Charter 4.03 and taking the oath of office within two weeks. Support. It's been moved and supported. Is there any discussion? No discussion. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, that completes that portion of our agenda. If you would like to uh, speak during communications from citizens, please raise your hand right now. Okay, I'll take you first, Mr. Jefferson. Um, Charles Jefferson, Sterling Heights. I wish I had more time, but... I guess I'll have to speak at the next meeting. Um, first of all, Mr. Swarovski, there has never been freedom of our religion in this country. We can ask the Native Americans, we can ask the uh, slaves, we can ask those uh, ladies up at uh, in Salem, we can ask uh, Warren Jepson, his group. So, that, anybody say if we have freedom of religion in this country? No, we don't. Um, I'd like to thank Mayor Taylor. He proved, he made my point today that we should vote no on the 400 signatures and no on the uh, four more years, not until we get districts, then we can get more participants into this, the pool. Um, we need districts 
because, uh, Mr. Vanderpool, I don't know if you noticed tonight, but a couple of people may have lost their spot that was in the district tonight instead of the way we do voting here in Sterling Heights. <clears throat> Funny how we were lectured by two people, one who settled a federal discrimination lawsuit that he got us into, not nobody else but him. And then we got Mike Radke, who said he wouldn't give anything to white men anymore, and who openly called people bigots just because they have a different idea than him. But we were openly, open lecture by them too. So I hope you pay attention, Sterling Heights. Um, Mike Rackett, you still haven't told us who up here on council uh, worked with a bunch of malcontented bigots not to get the uh, diversity and inclusion committee in there involved. We would like to know, because then we can vote them out of office. We can work on that. Um, next question, Mr. Van uh, Mayor Taylor. Um, you said something interesting at the last meeting. You said that we shouldn't, that you guys shouldn't pay attention to stuff on the internet or on social media. But it seems like to me, you pay attention to stuff when it's good for you. And you like for people to bring it up when it's, when it's good. But when you're over there putting people down, calling people out of their names, cussing and swearing at them, and then people bring it up here. Oh, no, 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 we can't do that. That's why I asked Ms. Ms. Davis to stay here. So maybe she can explain to us the rules for social media dealing with city council. How much time I got left? I got to get to Mr. Vanderpool. Um, and Mayor Taylor, can you denounce tonight, tonight, the discrimination that went on here in Sterling Heights that Mike Gradke put us through while he said he didn't want to give white men any more things? Can you denounce that tonight? Yeah, Mr. Vanderpool, I'm sorry, I got to do this fast. Uh, we need to uh, talk about Farmstead Park, what was going on with the Farmstead Park, with the zip lines, um, the Bound Road Deli, and then we just received word that we won the 15-mile uh, road uh, lawsuit. Um, how's that money going to be divvied up here amongst the residents in Sterling Heights, or is it just going to some general fund? Thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Jefferson. Um, Mr. Woods, I'll take you next. Uh, thank you, Council. My name is Matthew Woods. I'm an election advisor, a legal advisor to certain candidates and, uh, and uh, some uh, political parties. I've also worked as a private prosecutor and a private attorney general in several private racketeering cases. In all of America, in all states, election signs were allowed on the public easements, on the public right-of-ways, except in this town and in Shelby Heights that I found so far. City of Utica allows it. And we found that out when we did a, one of the things we use is we do our rallies. I don't know if you saw our political rallies at Hall and Shaner. Had hundreds of people there. Great community participation. We put our big signs on the public easements. Outback took them down. We filed criminal complaints against the general manager because there in that city does it correct. They allow election signs to be posted as temporary signs in public easements 45 days before the election. It's a form of political expression. It's a form of a way we have direct contact with the people. And it makes us, our signs mesh out away from the normal commercial structures. And that's those easements, as long as they don't block or harass, are allowed. Your code, unfortunately, doesn't do that. And I found out, I have your sign code here. There is a case cited, read. This is for your, who's the legal counsel here? here. We'll, we'll, I'll, I'll, I ask you to take note of the case, read versus Gilbert. It's one of the reasons why you won't allow political signage, unless you have another reason. Um, so we're filing criminal complaints with them. It is a criminal act. It's a misdemeanor. Uh, people are stealing our signs. We have 25 criminal cases open right now. We're consolidating them. We're aiding law enforcement to find the people who are doing this. This is a very serious thing. But to me, how different are you from Outback or from somebody who's stealing signs? You're not allowing... You have a beautiful town, and you know you want it to make it look beautiful, and you want to have these beautiful easements and these green easements, and you don't want it marred by oppositional political expression. 
But luckily, we have federal code, specifically Title 40, you might want to write this down, sir. Title 42, Section 1983, allows for private civil action against y'all uh, because you're depriving us of a federal right under the color of law. And uh, so that's a civil action. It's also a criminal action under Title 18, Section USC 242, which can involve all of you ind individually for violation of, of our federal rights. Your so I'm giving you a due process constructive notice of the error of your code. Um, I, I had to go to, I spoke to Shelby Heights on their council meeting tonight. They disagreed with me, so we're filing federal complaints to the United States Attorney General and a U.S. Attorney, <clears throat> and we want to, I mean, I'd really prefer that the mayor tonight, I guess you have a legal meeting tonight after this hearing, I would request respectfully that you do a temporary stand down order that would allow us to put up political signs and the public easements because when and, and i'd like to have an answer tomorrow by noon if possible i'll leave you my phone number if you're going to do that otherwise i'll include you in the federal complaints and uh, let me see uh, but we take this very serious please do not underestimate us uh, we want political expression i i represent a party it's not always liked by, by everyone but we want to assert these rights being able to speak to people that are directly on the streets is, is um, our rallies do that directly, but our signs should too. You, you're, you're, it's an overreach. It's causing irreparable harm to us that you take our signs, that you cite us, that you require a permit for a political sign. That's a total abridgment of our free speech rights. Uh, that should be temporarily vacated till election day through an order, stand down order to code enforcement, not to steal our signs, number one. Code needs to be amended to reflect that. You got. I ask, respectfully ask, that it be done by for the 2022 election. And um, uh, I just, this is called irreparable harm. This, this can involve all of you, all your, your spouse's assets. We can do judgment. If we get a judgment, we will lien all your properties and your spouse's properties. Premier. It's that serious. So I'm respectfully. Okay, thank oh, you. Trust me, trust me, I've done thank, it. Thank you very much, Mr. Very good, Woods. are we done? Yes, sir. All right, thank you very much. Um, <laughs> You do have a card? Make some, very, make some interesting points, and I can't wait to hear what our city attorney has to say. Who'd like to be next under communications from citizens? You can take all my wife's property, but leave mine alone. Okay, Mrs. Uh, Ryan. <laughs> Just kidding, honey. <laughs> include the dog? The dog's not leaving. I hope <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, we've... We've, if we could change the sign ordinance in a matter of hours, I would like that. But it was, it's been, it's been eight long years. <laughs> nine, ten, nine years. Let's do it, Mark. I'm ready. All right, Ms. Ryan, go ahead. Oh, I'm just so happy you're happy, Taylor, uh, Mr. Taylor. It's just, just, is Jackie Ryan, Sterling Heights. Um, man, where do we begin? I mean, geez, four minutes. Let's start from the top, work our way down, I guess. Um, acceptance. That was really good. But uh, what I have questions on is, um, why isn't it 100 signatures? I guess four and four kind of met the marketing criteria. But uh, other cities only have 100. And Mrs. Kosky, you know the history of this. You've been here the longest. How did we get to where we got with these signatures? I mean, we're up until 900s now, looks like. But it wasn't like that before, was it? You well know it wasn't. That was for a reason. And we know that reason, don't we, Mrs. Kosky? We've both been here a long time. I grew up in Utica. I know you well. Um, basically, that's ridiculous, the 400. That's definitely a no vote. It should be 100. You know? And as far as four years, no. I think two is plenty. I think the reason there is two is because you're not supposed to be doing the things you are doing. And we all know what that is. I mean, we talked about it already today. And that, um, my question is, um, why now? Why do you need four years now? You guys have been on here years, most of you, you know, except for the newbies. Uh, why now? Why four years now? Why are you bringing about this now? You know, that's a big question to us residents. So to me, it's no votes. I agree with Mr. Jefferson, no, no. You know, two years is plenty and 100 signatures is plenty too. Um, no, there's no fear here. Us residents don't have fear. 
you know, we managed to get stuff done when you guys brought stuff before. We'll get it done again. Takes a lot of time, takes a lot of inconvenience, but we'll get it done. Uh, Mr. Taylor, I'd like to know, I mean, this is not a Zoom meeting, but why are some of the other meetings still Zoom? Are we gonna have our next planning commission, which is coming up on October 14th that I think every resident should attend? Is that gonna be a Zoom meeting or is that gonna be right here? A lot of residents are asking, we'd like to know. We know what that's regarding. You can check out the minutes for the planning, the agenda. On October 14th, I invite all the residents to that one. You know, um, experience. I like to know the Sterling Heights experience brand name that we're stamping. You know, I've lived here. I don't have any problem with residents. If you're a good resident, you take care of your home, you're friendly to your neighbors, there's no issue. No issue. You know, I've lived here, yeah, a long time, Mr. Radke, just like you. You know, you know how the city goes. You, if you lived here, but I know you've been abroad a lot. You know, that European concept, it didn't work over there. They're not doing so good. That's why we're America. We're the best nation to live in. I think all you agree, we are the best nation to live in. I don't think any of you want to live in another nation but America. And why? Because it was founded on God. Yes. And we say at every Pledge of Allegiance, we are one nation under God indivisible with liberty and justice for all that's what you say every single meeting abide by the constitution is what i tell you all to do because when you come against the constitution we the residents got to stand up and do something about that so we will thank you very much okay thank you miss ryan would like to go next thank you sir in the front Hello, Mayor Taylor and Council. <clears throat> My name is Sanford Williams. Uh, I just got to say something right quick. I've heard all this. You guys have been discussing. I've been here for 30 years. Born and raised. I mean, pretty much grew up here in Sterling Heights. I never had an issue out of Sterling Heights. <clears throat> Love Sterling Heights. It's like my home. Um, I came here today because uh, I did some research on City Attorney Mark saying that you wanted to give it two years for uh, provisionings to be in Sterling Heights to get the state to fi finalize all the regulations. It's been two years. Uh, I'm not going to pronounce you guys' last name because I'm not going to say it right. Council uh, Merits Pro Liz, uh, Councilwoman Maria, Councilwoman Deanna, Councilwoman Barbara, you all said yes to uh, uh, provisioning sending in Sterling Heights. Now, Mr. Taylor, the reason I'm really coming to you is because I don't know if you heard about the Utica uh, opting in. Um, I emailed you and tried to explain to you, and I think I talked to Mark about it as well. Utica signatures was brought to the mayor of Utica. Mm -hmm. They had no choice to opt in. Now, I read all you guys, what you were saying, and I agree with you. You don't want a lot of provisioning centers in your city. Completely understand it. But if you get signatures here in Sterling Heights and you have to be pretty much forced to opt in, Mayor Taylor, I completely understand what you're saying because you want control. You don't want a bunch of provisionings up and down Van Dyke and Sterling Heights. Completely understand it. I'm coming to see if you guys will opt in and tell the state that you only want one application in your city. One. Because if this, somebody comes with signatures to you guys, you're not going to have, I guess you want to say, the power. Like uh, operation hours. Uh, what else? Is it? Uh, your, anything you, you guys, ordinance set up. I'm willing to accept it and work with you all. But the problem is, if we get signatures in here, somebody come with signatures, we're not going to have the power to have it like we want. One application is only needed in Sterling Heights. You have the power to do that. If you do that, you have the power to work. For example, I'm interested right, in... Hold, hold on, sir. Go ahead. Hold on, sir. 
Wow. So they, they're beating down the doors to get into the council. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, excuse me. No. Yeah, I'm not kidding. Yeah. I kind of got more into uh, what I was hearing. Uh, 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 and let me, I grew up here. I don't think okay, you can you can go you can have your time. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is, you continue to opt out. You're not going to have the power to do what you want with a provision center if you decide to opt in. If signatures come to you from citizens that has more than five percent signatures. To come to you, you will not have the power to, I guess you want to say, like, I guess you want to say choose the op operation hours, uh, whatever you decide to set up for your ordinance. Uh, me and my partner, uh, attorney Jason Malkowitz, is, has been doing a lot of research and we would like to open up a vision center in Sterling Heights. Only one. And my thing is, I'm just coming to you to say, Mayor, if you opt in now before signatures get to you, I think it'll benefit everybody up here instead of not opting in and let signatures come to you first. Are you understand what I'm trying to say here? Maybe I'm saying it wrong or something? I understand. You do understand it? That's, that's the really main reason I come, for you guys to actually think about it. I know uh, the, attorney, the city attorney said he wanted to look, give two more years to make sure all the laws were set with the uh, regulations. It's been two years. The regulations are all set. I'm just coming to ask if you guys are willing or thinking, would consider giving me the opportunity to open up one provisioning in Sterling Heights with my partner, uh, Jason. Okay. We don't do back and forth here, um, and your time is unfortunately up. So I'll, I'll make some comments when we're done. We take all the resident comments and then when everybody's done, the city council has an opportunity to respond. So I'll make some, I'll respond you Thank know, you. after everybody else has a chance to talk. Okay? Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, who else would like to speak under communications from citizens? Yep. Thank you, sir. Yes, hi, my name is uh, Scott Turkington. Um, I've resided in Sterling Heights for about 40 years, 35 or so, uh, at 11025 16 and a half mile road. Uh, my comments today uh, regard a proposed uh, major development, uh, which is uh, being planned and discussed for the property adjacent to mine. Uh, that address is 11063 16 and a half mile road. Uh, I thought it would be useful to comment here uh, because I don't believe that a lot of awareness of this proposed major development in a quiet residential neighborhood uh, is out there. Very little information is available that I could find anywhere on the city website. And the notice provisions evidently only go 300 feet from the from the property. Um, I've written several letters into the uh, planning department, had some discussions with the planning officials, uh, and participated in the Zoom hearing on August 25th of the zoning board. Um, I thought for the benefit of the audience uh, and the people that might be watching on TV, and for the record, uh, I would read the last letter that I wrote to the council, the planning board, the zoning board, and the uh, Sterling Heights lawyer. Uh, so that letter, the subject is the proposed uh, major development, Bosnian American Islamic Center, 11063, 16 and a half mile. Uh, the proposed development poses serious and numerous problems. I've owned the adjacent property since the mid-1980s. I was made aware of this uh, proposed major development on August 21st via a form letter from the USPS and that, that letter indicated that two business days later, Tuesday the 25th, would be the Zoom hearing, which I was able to participate in. Um, at that hearing, uh, discussion was strictly limited to the height of the building. There was a seven and a half story speaker tower that was proposed in a five story dome which both apparently did not meet the height uh, regulations. Anyway, the petitioner subsequently withdrew those variance requests, reduced those heights, the speaker tower slightly and the, the dome slightly. Um, and anyway, so then this was, uh, this was postponed until uh, 
now the, uh, it was supposed to be, I guess, the October 14th meeting of the Planning Commission. That's now deferred, I'm told. Um, now back to the letter. Had the ZBA passed its motion on August 25th, I was advised that a meeting of the Planning Board would be held September 9th, two weeks hence, at which time final approval of the project could and presumably would uh, be granted. And this hearing, of course, has been deferred. Um, there's some perspective necessary for proper evaluation and consideration of this major development proposal. The area is a quiet residential neighborhood, zoned R80 and R70. The proposed major development is essentially in the center of the square mile bounded by Van Dyke, Dodge Park, Metro Parkway, and 17 Mile Road. Within this square mile, Van Dyke is a major thoroughfare, three to four lanes each way with a median, and businesses all along the east side of Van Dyke. Uh, Dodge Park has a small strip center uh, north of 16 and a half mile with a few businesses, uh, pizzeria, 7-Eleven, et cetera. It appears to be about 500 feet in length. Uh, the rest of Dodge Park has no commercial business. Metro Parkway has no commercial business. 17 mile, no commercial business. 16 and a half mile, no commercial business. Okay, sir, I'm going to have to cut you off there and we'll have to leave it at that for tonight. If you want to provide more information, you can email any one of the council members with any additional thoughts you might have. Okay. Time is up, you're saying? Yeah, you, your time is up. I see. Thank um, you, sir. Okay. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak? Take you next, Miss. as with respect to the mayor and the council, I have asthma. That's the reason I haven't worn it most of the night because I cannot breathe with it on. For respect for everybody here, I'm going to put it on. <coughs> um, if I can, can I hand these out to you guys? Just give it to our clerk, please. Yeah. You can, to the clerk. Ma'am, okay, <laughs> ma give it to our clerk and she'll get it to us. Okay, perfect. What I do is I do events called Back to Blue to support the police and show the police that citizens out there love them and care about them. I'm going to have one Saturday, October 24th in Sterling Heights here in front of the police department at 10 o'clock in the morning. I respectfully ask that the council and the mayor would be there to show us our support and to show the police their support and respect. If the mayor would like to say something at that meeting, he can. It's just not, it's not a meeting. It's just, what we do is I just have a chaplain come and pray, and I have a couple of people come and pray and show, uh, talk and show their support for the police, and then we have donuts and coffee and things like that. It's only for an hour, and I'm going to stress above anything, this is non-political. This has nothing to do with politics. I, I never had any issues with any other opposing groups bothering me. I've done four of these so far. I've done one in East Point, or three so far, I'm sorry. I've done one in East Point, Sterling, or, uh, I'm sorry. I've done one in East Point. I've done one in St. Clair Shores. And I just did one, and, and I've done it one and more. My most recent one was a couple of weeks ago in East Point, and I didn't have any problems with anybody, or any opposing groups, bothering me or anything. And this is only an hour-long event, so I, I am inviting the council and the mayor to please be there. Just, we, I just want to show our support for the police. And, and it's a community event, so I want the community to come out too. Thank you. All right, thank you, ma'am. Who else would like to speak under communications from citizens? Take you in the back. Speaking <coughs> about Mosque that you have allowed to come here. Uh, first, I want to say the goal of Islamic migration, primary goal of the Hijra, meaning Islamic migration or immigration, is the establishment of an Islamic state. This is achieved through Dewa. 
They were means to call. An Islamic <coughs> means a call to Islam. And so it is a missionary call to embrace Islam. It is unlike a personal conversion call, though at the outset it may look like that. They were both religious and political, as there is no separation between sacred and secular, between state and religion and Islam. They were is to spread the message of Islam and the establishment of an Islamic state. I hope you understand what this means. That's why they come here and why they're coming here to our city and every city they go to is to establish an Islamic state and set up Sharia law. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just stop you, ma'am, because I, I'm sorry to cut you off again, but I, you're free to talk. You have freedom of speech. You're free to say whatever you want. But within reason, we have council rules here that we don't tolerate attacks on other religions. We don't tolerate on a religion. sweeping. It's not just religion. There's no separation between secular and state. Okay, in that we understand. We understand. We've heard it time and time again from people who make the claims about Sharia law and about the Muslim religion. We're not going to have this turn into <coughs> a space we'll where, hold on. Hold on, ma'am. I don't want our city council meetings to become, and it's not the appropriate place morning. for What's people to be. Ma'am, if you don't stop and let me speak, I'm going to unfortunately have to ask you to leave. We are not going to let the city council meetings become a place for people to bash Muslims or bash Christians or bash Jews or say why one religion is wrong and another religion is right. It's not germane to city business, if okay? If it's just religion, that'd be fine. That's not the problem. Then you can talk about items germane to city business. Religion and state. Go it's, ahead, Ms. Riska. It's a political uh, entity that seeks to bring us under Sharia law. Okay, thank you for your comments. Anyone else under communications? Mr. Bielan? Mr. Woods, we only take one, one round. Good evening, Mayor, City Council. Uh, there's a couple issues that I want to bring up. Um, first and foremost, <clears throat> I would like to find out if um, the city is doing anything about Van Dyke right around the Clinton River and Canal intersection. They did some construction, and the patch they put in there, the ground is falling, the patch is falling. I would say it's, it's approximately about a half an inch going, and it's getting worse and worse every day when I travel that. So if you could find that out, please. So I know we spent a lot of time and effort fixing up that area for construction to ruin it again. Uh, number two I would like to talk about is um, what, I ha what I have is I would like to know why the water bill is I mean, so outrageous. I know we beat it, beat it to death, but I'm when I did some research, I get finger pointing. Well, the city hasn't done anything. The county hasn't done anything. The water authority had pay raises. That's why we have it. The city lost a lawsuit. Therefore, that's all the increased rates. Why is my sewage over $500? You got a lot of people that use sprinklers. You got a lot of people with pools. That water doesn't go in our sewage. And your $26 hasn't increased in decades with the discount. You give that to every home regardless. When I've talked to um, city water department, what they said is, well, we're not set up for two meters. Other cities have it. And I've kept my mouth shut for years watching the water prices go <coughs> way up. And then if I can't pay it, what does it happen? It goes on the go to lean on property, and if I fight it, I could get, my, I could get uh, foreclosed upon because I didn't pay it. That's unfair. That's very unfair. And the final one that I'm, I'm uh, talking about 
is some people on city council, I know that they disagree with me. I know they don't like me. I was accused of hard to work with. I've had individual, political individuals state that, well, I'm going to talk to my veterans parents and vote you out of office because I disagree with that. I'm basically telling everybody here and in the aud audience that I don't want threats like that. I'm doing the best I can. I am representing the veterans in the community. And how dare people on the council right now seeing that I, I don't do the best interest. Some of them are fantastic. Mr. Yanez, he's helped the veterans with the donation. I challenge everybody else to do the same. I've talked to the city. There's nothing that the city wants to do to help me or the veterans community with the, the pandemic that's happening because we haven't had money coming in since before the pandemic to tell you the truth. And I mean, I've had the community help me. I've had some politicians that have turned a blind eye, put it that way. But in 2018, I know Mr. Mayor on Veterans Day says that we, I'm paraphrasing, but it's in uh, the thing, paraphrasing basically says we stand behind the veterans. Well, I'd like to see, put your money where your mouth is. The city government saying we can't do anything because that's how it's, done for nonprofits. I would like to see the city help the veterans and not just on Veterans Day. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Bielan. Anyone else under communications from citizens? If not, council, okay, come on up, ma'am. <coughs> Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, sit down, sit down, sit down, sir, sit down. Good evening. Good evening. I haven't been to a council meeting for a long time. I've been living in Sterling Heights for 44 years. My name is Rita Selman. I live at 16 and a half mile at 11258, about four houses away from Charwood. And it came to my attention that they're going to build another church on our street. I have no problem with religion, what your religion is. We have a Chinese church there. We have another one. We have Catholic. In fact, I think where I live is all holy ground because I think if you name it, we're going to have it. My complaint is I just found out that this church that is going to come up is going to be more than a church. They want a community center that's going to be six stories high. They want a gym. We just built this community center. If we're supposed to be diverse, why isn't this community center good enough for that church? None of the other churches on that block have it. They want a parking lot for 150 cars. I have so much traffic on that car, a street, especially when Chrysler's comes in and out. Sometimes I can't get out of my driveway. And now they want a community center with 150 cars, and they're going to have activities daily. People race up and down that street at night. They use it for a racing thing, and my I have to wear earplugs at night, so when they do that, I don't get it. And I don't need extra traffic during the day. I have no problem with them building a church. God bless them. Let them have their church. But I can't see why the city is going to give them permission to have a community center and a gym and everything there when we spent how much money to build this. This isn't good enough for them if they don't want to be diverse. And I don't think that's right. And I don't know how to go about that with you people or where. And I heard that zoning already approved it. Would you like a six-story building across the street from your house? With a community center? I don't think you would. 
So I am opposed to this, and I hope you people would look into it and think about it. I have no problem with the church, and they want a commercial kitchen. What do they need a commercial chicken, a kitchen for if it's a church? None of those other churches on that block do that. And they're not asking for a community thing. I, I mean, to get up in the morning and I have to look at a six-story structure and have cars coming in all the day and have more traffic on that street. It's only a two-lane street with maybe for your left turn for three-quarters of the mile, but the rest isn't. And if that's going to happen, then you're going to have to widen that street. And thank you. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak? Mr. Smith? <coughs> Mr. Smith, we missed you. Thank you very much. Uh, I don't get in trouble at home for speaking at this meeting because uh, I told my wife I was just going to come down here and say hi to Matthew, but I just couldn't resist. Uh, it's the first time I've appeared in this venue. I just want to say this room has absolutely terrible acoustics, and you can barely hear anything anybody says on television. And if you wear a mask, don't even bother speaking because you can't understand a word they say. Uh, Matthew's a great guy. He's come right. to town. Paul, and ho hold his on. His points are well spoken. Excuse me? Can you hold on a second? Salem, you need to go sit back down. Do you need that bag back? Mark, can you give him the bag back? Salem, you, you've interrupted our meeting three or four times now. I'll see you in the, in the office. Ay, ay, ay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Salem. Anything that I can Not bothering me. help you. Okay, just, just hold on a moment, because it's very distracting to us up here. I don't know what to do. I mean, I, I don't know if, if he's having some sort of an emergency, I'm going to let Mr. Kashubsky handle it. Are you okay, Salem? Not okay. In fact, I have back a problem. Okay, well, we need you to sit down. You've distracted. You're, you keep interrupting the meeting. Okay, can you go sit back down, please? We can't have you up here at the, at the administration's table. Thank you, Mr. Kashubsky. Okay, are you good, Paul? Well, you go ahead. Uh, it seems like our, our mayor and city manager, uh, when it serves their purpose, they compare Sterling Heights to other communities and say how we're out of line with other communities, but they cherry pick that, that when we're out of line with 900 petition signatures or 400 petition signatures to run for office, we're out of line with state house of representatives, the county commissioner, essentially anything else, it's a hundred dollar refundable deposit to run for office. And whether it's 900 or 400, it's still an insurmountable barrier. Uh, Sterling Heights is essentially pretty much the only community any place that doesn't have districts. Everybody's at large. So we talk about diversity and ethnic uh, uh, inclusion. Well, essentially when you have one district, you have what you got right here, a council that votes seven to nothing on everything because the city isn't represented, just one small enclave is represented. If we really want to get right, we need to have six districts, uh, basically six rectangles, six square miles a piece, and let the city have a word in how things run, not just one little enclave. Campaign signs, we're really out of line. Clinton Township, Shelby, Warren, Madison, Troy, every place. They got signs every place. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It looks like a junk heap. There's signs everywhere. But November 4th, it'll go away. We got code enforcement going around, attacking Republicans, sending SWAT teams out to Republican houses, threatening huge fines for having a little bit oversized signs. Well, meanwhile, we have a residence on, on Hayes, I think it was 38181 uh, Hayes with a interstate size billboard on a residential home. 
We've got the Union Hall over on uh, Mound and 17 with two billboards there, unregistered, totally illegal. But they're Democrat billboards and code enforcement is going to slow walk that until election day. Well, you put up a Trump sign and you'll have a SWAT team in your driveway, just like my neighbor did, and you'll get threatening letters just like I did for, for a Trump sign. So we need to get legal. First Amendment, free speech, 14th Amendment, equal justice under the law. And Matthew, thanks for coming to town. Uh, we really need you, and we know that what you say is not just idle threats, but the real deal. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Uh, you know, you, comments are really supposed to be directed to the city council, not to the television audience. We're not giving speeches here. You're here to make comments to the city council, so we appreciate it if anyone else wants to speak that they abide by that council rule. Anyone else? And once, going twice. Okay, I'll close that portion of our meeting. We'll go on to reports from city administration. Mr. Vanderpool, anything tonight that you Mayor, want to touch uh, on? Uh, thank you. Just quickly, a couple things. A resident asked about the farmstead zip line. The applicant has withdrawn that application, so uh, we'll have to look at some other ideas there. Mount Road Deli is uh, partially uh, occupied. They have plans to continue their um, uh, build out of that area or occupying that site. Uh, the 15-mile uh, sinkhole lawsuit that the Public Works Commissioner announced uh, last week for $12.5 million. Uh, the city makes up about 30% of the mid, uh, so in essence our portion of that would be just under $4 million. Uh, that will likely be applied to uh, any f uh, forthcoming uh, charges or uh, future repairs, so that has yet to be uh, determined. Uh, we're, we're pleased with uh, the settlement. Uh, we had always uh, wanted the responsible parties to be held responsible in the name of good government, so uh, the, the end result uh, we think is encouraging. Um, there was also uh, Mr. Beelan comment about uh, Van Dyke and Clinton River, although that's not uh, city jurisdiction there. We'll take a look and, and see what's going on there and collaborate some with the city of Utica. Uh, we're happy to look at your water bill to see why um, you may be out of line. Um, if you uh, call me tomorrow or email me, I'll be happy to walk you through that process. Uh, there is grant funding for uh, various businesses in the city through the CARES Act funding. Uh, that includes a uh, nonprofit. So if Mr. Beelan has a, um, a veterans association that he wants to uh, have considered, I can certainly uh, direct him in, in the right area. And uh, I believe uh, Mr. Kazupski can comment briefly on some of the concerns regarding um, the uh, planning commission case that is forthcoming near 16 and a half mile road. Mr. Kaszewski. Uh Thank you, Mayor. Um, I, although I can't really speak on the uh, actual application, I can tell you that the six and a half mile project did go before the zoning board originally. The applicant came back with revised plans that met all of the zoning ordinances, so the zoning board no longer needed to hear the case. The matter now goes to the Planning Commission, which has the exclusive purview in that case. City Council has no uh, vote in that. This is the Planning Commission's job to go through this and any members of the public that wish to go to that meeting. Um, I think it was scheduled for October, uh, but the petitioner has asked for an extension or to a different date to get the plans into the city planner's office. So uh, the new date will be forthcoming and you'll be looking for notices on that. Okay. Mr. Vanderpool, anything else? Uh, nothing further, Mayor. Thank okay. you. Mr. Kaszewski, anything else? Uh, nothing tonight, Mayor. You know, do you want to are you prepared to address the issue of campaign signs in the <laughs> easement or the right of way, or do you want to? How do you want to handle that? Because uh, I think I'm going to ask you anyways. <laughs> sure, uh, Mayor. Uh, thank you. So, um, it has been you know, even in the Reed case that was um, brought up tonight. The Reed case specifically addressed uh, prior case law of the Supreme Court it goes back to 1984 that allows for the uh, cities and municipalities to control their uh, right-of-ways with regard to signs. 
um, as long as it's in a content neutral manner, which our sign ordinance is. In other words, we prohibit any and all signs in our right of ways because of aesthetic purposes and it causes um, site issues with respect to vehicles and things of that nature. Uh, the case law is pretty clear and has been set since 1984. And in fact, the Reed case is a 2015 case, I believe, which addressed that issue and, ex and expressly stated in the opinion that the, uh, I believe it was the St. Vincent case, uh, still is good law and still allows for municipalities to control their right of ways, which makes perfect sense. Obviously, there's alternative forms on sidewalks for individuals to express their activities or to uh, have other means of communications, which is exactly what the Supreme Court has said. We don't say anything about political signs in our ordinance. In fact, our ordinance doesn't address any type of sign content because we don't uh, discriminate based on basis of content at all. That's the, that's the crux of the Reed case, and that's why we read the ordinance several years back to make certain that it was content neutral because we don't ask for a permit for a political sign, we say any temporary sign has to have a permit. Regardless if you're selling Subway or you're standing out there with a, um, uh, a sign for taxes during tax season, um, we, don't, um, we don't pick and choose winners and losers in that regard. So um, I'll listen to the gentleman who came tonight. I'll listen to what he has to say, but I think the Supreme Court has spoken on this issue several times. Okay, thank you, Mr. Kashubsky. Council, I'll open it up to reports, new business. I'd like to go first, anyone? No, it has been a long, long meeting, but nobody's mm -hmm. gonna speak. Do you want me to speak? You, want me to speak? I, you don't have to. <laughs> you don't have to. I, I, I just, Yannis. thank you, Mr. Mayor, for recognizing me. I, I, uh, I do wanna say something, and Mr. Blonde uh, got up and, and spoke, and I, I had a conversation with him a couple of days ago uh, over their struggles to, you know, maintain uh, their VFW hall. And, uh, you know, I, I, I know that there's some history and so on and so forth, and it doesn't matter. You know, this is about the veterans, and we have such a hard time getting um, veterans from the Iraq and Afghanistan wars to participate in, in things like VFW and American Legion. Um, but we still need to have... Th those operations available to people who need them. Uh, the VFW, American Legion, uh, there's, there's five or, uh, recognized organizations that, that help service people, um, in, especially in real time of need. Uh, it's important to make sure that they are available to help other veterans when those veterans, veterans need them. They might not show up at every single meeting or you know, what have you, but the fact of the matter is having those facilities available to veterans is extremely important. And we don't have, you know, the, the county has a, a, a veterans administration, but we don't have like our local veterans administration. We have the VFW hall and, th and that's it. And so having said that, you know, one of the things Mr. Pawan relayed to me was next year, they're, they're struggling to keep the doors open. Next year is gonna be the 100th anniversary of our, our the chapter. And we need to make sure that we stand up as citizens and help our veterans out, make sure that we keep the doors open so they can help out veterans um, whenever uh, they need. We did a couple years ago, we did a, a business suit drive where we took uh, donations for business suits because of the, uh, the uh, employment boot camp that uh, Michigan Works does. And they have veterans that don't have dress clothes for to go to interviews. And so that's something the VFW did and we worked together on that and I was, proud to work with them and I, I, I would, it would be a heartbreaker to see those doors close. And the third or the fourth largest city in the state doesn't even have a, a, um, access for veterans at, at the local level. So uh, I would encourage um, all of us uh, on city council and anybody who's listening to make sure that, um, you know, please participate if, there's, if they're having some sort of event um, they're looking for donations, uh, you know, just a little bit goes a long way if a lot of people donate. Um, I, just, I just can't express enough how important having uh, some sort of veteran organization is to our, our local veterans. And that's, that's all I had to say, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Yannis. Anyone else? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Ed. Thank you. I, I completely agree with uh, Councilman Yannis. We have to do more for our veterans. My father is a veteran and you know, they've been through a lot. So anything you folks can do, and I know we're gonna think about it too, how we can help. Um, in addition to that, I've received several over the last several months actually uh, inquiries and emails from residents 
who are interested in keeping chickens in their backyard. Um, I'm not sure if there's something that we should change in Sterling Heights, but I'd like to get some more information about it. So without objection, I'd like the city administration to prepare a memo for city council to uh, kind of look at the pros and cons and also what our surrounding communities do uh, in regards to backyards chickens. Any objection? I don't have any objection. No, nope. mm. I fully support that. Okay. Um, and everyone at home, uh, this is just for me and my family. I hope that no matter what the state does, that you continue to mask up and keep your families and your community safe. Everyone here we're, on the city council wears a mask unless we're speaking. Um, we want to keep everyone safe and healthy into next year. Uh, you see the news, you see what's going on. If, if people do not take precautions, they do not do what they're supposed to do, the, the chances of getting sick just rise. And my father, who is a veteran, who has uh, non-operable lung cancer, I think about him every day. That's why I wear a mask, because I can't get him sick. Um, so please, please wear a mask and protect you, your neighbors, and your families. That's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Radke. Anyone else? Just a couple things I want to bring up. Um, I've heard from a number of residents about their water and sewer bills, and I agree they're, they're high. Um, we have had more consumption. What we have this year that we haven't had in years past is the ability to go on the BSNA website. You can go on to, through the city's website, go to utility billing, and you can see actually your utility billing usage over the last several quarters. I think it goes back about four years. You can actually look and see how much water usage you had this year as in a comparison to last year, last year and other years. With sewer rates, sewer rates, a lot of people ask, why is the sewer rate based on water consumption? If I'm watering my lawn or using my water to fill up a pool, it doesn't go into the sewer. I understand that, I agree with that. Um, however, Sterling Heights right now does not allow a second meter. The second meter, some municipalities allow you to have a second meter I'd be willing to have that discussion. It's been several years since we've had that discussion here at, at the, at the uh, city council. And I think it's worthwhile to go through that exercise to talk about what it would mean to have a second meter. Just for round number purposes, the county charges us something like $25 million a year for sewer services, okay? We have to pay that no matter how much sewer use we have. The way we apportion it is by your water rate. Now, jump in if I'm wrong about anything, okay, Mark or Mark? The way the city apportions that is based on how much total water consumption you have. We could change it to how much total indoor water consumption you have and allow you to get a second meter. Of course, if you don't get that second meter, then it would be based on total water consumption. But for the residents who choose to get a second meter, any of the outdoor water usage would not count towards the sewer rate. But we'd still have that $25 million or so that would have to be apportioned and it would be apportioned among fewer rate payers. <clears throat> so the actual rate would go up. So even for people who get a second meter, they're going to be paying a higher rate for the indoor water consumption. I've talked to plumbers and I've talked to people who've gotten second meters in other cities and. You know, between getting the meter, getting the plumbing, doing the inspection work and paying the permits to the city, there could be a multi-year payback. It's gonna take years, probably, depending on how much water you use, if you're an average resident, it's gonna take a long time to pay it back. Who's not, where it's not gonna take a long time to, to pay it back is our commercial and industrial users. So those folks might have a very quick payback so it would be helping those bigger businesses at the expense of residents. So there's a lot of drawbacks to it. It's not as cut and dry as it might seem. So really the reason that these bills continue to go up is because of increased costs, increased costs from the county, increased costs from the Great Lakes Water Authority. And yeah, the city has increased costs every year. We have inflationary increases too. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, just talking to Mr. Vanderpool about this, for the average resident, you're paying about a dollar a day for all the clean water that you want and for all of the sewage that you can, or sewer uh, services that you can use. So for the average resident, it's about a dollar a day for each, okay? Um, and so for some, it's $2. And if it's $2, it's, you're gonna see a big bill in the summers. But 
it's still a pretty good bargain um, considering how important those services are. Um, on campaign signs, I just want to say, you know, I've tried for years to change the campaign sign ordinance here. It's one thing that I just seem to be unable to get through. I don't think I want to see campaign signs or any signs in the media. And I hate when people just go throw those things, you know, on the, on the medians or on the right of way. And, and I wouldn't want to see that. I can't imagine that that could be, could be legal, but, um, I don't, uh, certainly don't like the, uh, you know, the, uh, registration form. Finally, we've heard a lot about four by 400 tonight and four and 400 for those who would say we don't go far enough that we're at a 1000 signature requirement and reducing it down to 400 doesn't go far enough. You may be right. You may be wrong, but if that is your mentality, then certainly I would say 400 is better than a thousand. Um, and it's a much lower barrier to candidates to just get a 400 signature requirement than a 1000 signature requirement or where, wherever we're going to be, we're at like 93,000. So, so, so yeah. we're going to be, you know, we, by the time this is all said and done, we could be around 95,000 registered voters, which means you'd need 950 good signatures. Um, so that's, that's quite a difference. So with that, unless anyone else has anything, I would say, no, Mr. No, Mr. Jefferson, you're not going to filibuster. We don't care what you're saying from out in the side. No, 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 no. Entertain a motion to adjourn. So move. Support. No discussion. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Motion is adjourned. Thank you, Charles.